working. I think we're live. This is working. Playing in a few places. There we go. Today, bare phone is active. Let me make sure that everything is working here. Let me check out YouTube. I think Dave Smith is joining us, but those New York City boys sleep in real late. Real late. So I don't know if he's up yet. But um, we were texting yesterday about him doing it. Democracy Bear was enjoying. Oh, that's cool. Maybe I'll do a, a little bit more. Oh, Kyle, I'll get to your song today. I'll get to your song today. Eric's here. Coddington's here. Political bear. Oh, Bedrosian's here. I saw you just got a flask. It was pretty sweet. Yeah, the last of the three flasks to complete the trilogy. The flasks are up. Here's the, the final flask. I mean, not permanently, but at least for now. I, I, I ordered these a while ago and it finally came in. But here is... Uh, and I thought Haven made the design, but I guess he didn't. So I have no idea who made this design. Whoever did, uh, you rock. But check out this design. That's a cool looking bear. I might be wrong, but I'm not lying. The Unbearables, sweet flask. I'm only selling 100. I just put it, I put it up on, uh, my hair's all crazy today. How can it be this weird when it's so short? I put it up on Patreon and for the, the subscribers, we sent out an email first because... You never know. Sometimes they go super fast. So, um, and I try not to sell a ton of them just to keep it special. My hair is nuts. How does my hair get messy when it's like a quarter inch long? All right. First things first. Thank you for joining the Unbearables live stream. And Eric Nimmer's set is finally ready for sale. Five bucks at hugepianist.com slash specials. I sent out a link for um, uh, subscribers, uh, a promo code, so you can get it for free. It's it's our way of saying thank you for all the support, and uh, and or you can buy it, either way. But there was a lot of story behind it. You know, we were going to tape it at the Hazlitt Theater. They kicked us out for being racists, so we um, did the show at the Carnegie Library, and it went great and Eric crushed and his audio is great. Unlike my set, 
Uh, but that's all right. We're focused on his. So it's five bucks. Here's the trailer for it. Check it out. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, please make some noise for my friend, Mr. Eric Nimmer. There you go. And it's completely unedited. 39 straight minutes. My, in, my, my intro to him, untouched. His entire set, there isn't one frame edited out. I don't know why, but my hair is pissing me off. It's the lack of symmetry. I would wear a hat, but then I'd look really crazy with, with glasses on. It's, I'd rather have like, like a wound on my head didn't lack like just really weird lack of symmetry that's why i never understood people that that have like you know how some people have like the hair go go down like one side of their face like where they're like oh i only listen to bright eyes and i hit my dad he sent me to brown and i wanted to go to yeah and they just have hair go over one eye i always hated that haircut because of the lack of symmetry and i don't need like perfect symmetry you know, but just attempt symmetry. And right now I have no symmetry. <sighs> All right. So what do you guys want to talk about? I got some um, some verifications I need to do. Hey, love. Hi. What's that? Do you want me to fix your hair? Yeah, fix my hair. It's, Amy's going to fix my hair. She's watching the stream in the other room. I am. Thank you, love. You're welcome. See that, that cow lick thing? It's more like a, like a dinosaur lick. <laughs> Maybe George was licking you. Oh, yeah, George. Me and George had, had some drama yesterday. I yelled at him. Yeah. Because he was running around the, the yard like a champ, but I was... A little better. Thank you, love. You're welcome. Keys? Keys? What are you guys doing? Uh, well, he's about to take a nap. Oh, nice. All right. Hopefully that'll... Is he still stay. pumped about his uh, shark shoes? He loves his shark shoes. Dude, Walter loves shark shoes. Like, like if, you, if he's like not feeling like uh, going somewhere... You're just like, shark shoes. He's like, yes. It's dinosaur coat. Nice. I love you, baby. I love you, too. Do you need more coffee? Yeah, I'd love more coffee. Thanks. Um, Crowder's show today is going to be insanely funny. We're just writing uh, jokes. All right. What else do I want to show you people? All right. So this is what some verifications that need to happen. Sage Bear here. I thought you might find this interesting. Oh, thanks, baby. These are cool glasses. They are. I know, but that's why I love the uh, the metal Bear Steins is because they don't break in the mail. Like uh, the first round of Bear Steins, we had a lot of breaking break broken steins. So that was a real uh, real situation. But now the yeah, bear they were, they were, the handle kept breaking. The handle well, kept not breaking. Not kept breaking. It like broke a couple times. But... Yeah, but it was really intense. Bye. Sophie's being here too. Yeah, of course. You want to open that door for herself? If you want to let any of the dogs in here. Yeah, so I was, uh, Amy kept laughing at, at me yelling at the dog though. Cause I was like, damn it, George. <laughs> and he was like, what? I'm fucking loving this. I'm freaking out right now. And, uh, but it, there was a, there's a road. It's pretty far from our house, but I got real paranoid. He was just going to run on the road. And my son had witnessed his favorite animal in the world die so i was like damn it george and then i finally got him and then um we had a little drama but see, that's the thing you can't like hit him or anything because then they'll never come back you have to always be like happy when they come back even when you're like really pissed off hey ben what's up buddy okay uh sage bear here i thought you might find this interesting in the uk they now have hate fact laws for example gang rape statistics you can now be banned from Twitter for posting inconvenient truths. Much not gay love, Sage Bear. 
Uh, and he sent me an article, The Death of Free Speech, Twitter Ramps Up Censorship of Hate Facts. Oh, I know. I just listened to Tommy Robinson talk about that. Tommy Robinson is so funny. Like, I find him very funny. And I know he's like a heroic kind of badass dude. But I laugh so hard when I hear him talk. Because he's like, he always talks like he just came in from a fight. And he's trying to explain people what's going on. And there's something really pressing. He's like, I'm telling you, man. I didn't do nothing. Someone just hit me with a fucking glass. So I, I, I fucking did what I had. To. You know, he's just always like, um, it always sounds like he's backed into a corner and he's just explaining himself from like something crazy. But yeah, he was talking about that. How if you just, uh, he got banned from Twitter for, for facts, just saying basic facts. And um, I'm starting to realize why this immigration thing's so ramped up. It's because these stupid governments convince people to not fuck and have kids. You know, like China is about to enter a world of hell. That whole one child rule is about to start biting them so hard in the ass. Like you can't, you can't like um, socially design people like the governments try to do and like limit birth and all and death and all this shit. Because you need people to keep paying into the system or else it all falls apart. And so now these governments are so desperate and frantic because they're literally their system is toppling because they're, they're not having enough children to. Um... Oh, Dave's here. Sweet. I can uh, I can hit him up. Let me see if there's anything. Else. Oh, I got to read a couple more of these and then uh, I'll hit him right up. Hey, man, thank you so much for not being a soy bitch and saying it like it is. No matter how hard they try to silence you, can I be Big Mouth Bear? Love you, bro. Kevin T. Welcome, Big Mouth Bear. That was really nice of you. PayPal.me slash Feed the Bear to write me a little note. Or you can super chat me on YouTube, which I'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, I, I uploaded that music theory clip. And um, my pia- my old piano teacher was writing in. Just as trippy as always. And uh, really excited to read some of that stuff to you guys. All right, so let me call up uh, Dave Smith. Dave Smith is a libertarian comedian and a friend. He's an awesome guy. He has a, a podcast, Part of the Problem. I listen to it all the time. Really good dude. And we just wanted to riff about jokes. So I'm going to hit him up. Here we go. Hey, buddy. Yo, Smith, you there? I'm trying to get... Do you got... Um, oh, sweet. You got a uh, video going. Hold on one second. <laughs> Why is this not working? It's working on my end. Can you can you hear me? Hey, hold on. Can you talk again? Yo, what's up? DS. D Smith in the house. D Smith. Try again? D Smith in the house. Why am I? I can't hear you. You can't? I can call you. And you can hear me on there. There's no worries. If you want to figure that out, I'll read one more um, one more of these little messages people write me. So, uh, what else do I got here? One second. I don't know why your audio is not coming through. Oh, no worries. All right, someone, Peter wrote to me, I'm terrible at technology, so this and YouTube are how I roll. Now. Yo, what up? What up? He wrote, today your line, do something better so you get sucked was so fucking good. Actually, LOL, classic. And uh, he wrote that I should make t-shirts from that. I think that's pretty funny. Can you hear me, DS? What does it say? How do I unmute the stupid speakers? Hello? Yo. DS. Dude, there's no, there's no worries. We can just hang. I'll just play some piano while you, uh, we figure that out. You want to just try hanging up and calling again? Because I'm not sure why it's not working. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Dave Smith. Hey. Yo. Can you hear me? Hold on. You sound great. You have a deep, just masculine, <sighs> just, uh, I'd say, uh, sexual voice. Oh, dude, Eric Nimmer knows, uh, Nimmer just wrote to me that he knows Dave Smith and he gave him advice when Nimmer first started. Yeah, Smith's a legend, dude. I heard, I heard Smith on, um, Joe Rogan, uh, like three years ago. And I just, I, I tweeted at him immediately because I thought what he was saying was so right on. 
about college campuses and um, the socialist agenda of college campuses. And uh, as as a, I think Smith might be trying to call me back. Uh, he he probably only pays in cryptocurrency or some shit, so he's probably has to figure that out. I'm gonna use that joke with him when he gets it going. Let's see if we got another another Smith call. Let's try him again. I'm really excited about the cryptocurrency joke I'm gonna try. Right now his audio is part of the problem. Yo. Hey buddy, I'm just I just answered on my phone, but hold on one second. Let me just try to like restart my computer because it's acting all weird. Oh no worries. I got some good I, I was doing some jokes that your audio is part of the problem. I don't know. Just restart. Oh, hey. hey oh! Alright, yeah, restart and then call me back. Alright, I'll restart and call you back in one second. Yeah, no worries. All right, in the meantime, I'm not going to keep it like like this. I'm going to go back to that because that's the power of OBS, uh, OBS software. All right. So those of you that are just joining us, Eric Nimmer's new special, Send It, is now available for five bucks. Or if you're a subscriber, I treated you to a code. First hundred people can I get it for free because I like to treat my people right with my lack of uh, eyeglass asymmetry now. So that's hugepianist.com slash specials. Oh, and the bear phone is active. For those of you with the bear phone number. I can't wait to read to you what my uh, childhood piano teacher was writing to me about, about um, Paco Bell's Canon and D. Such a genius, like so trippy. And oh, and Bob wanted me to, to shout out uh, uh, the podcast bean, pod bean. Sorry, Bob, I got to get this proper. All right, Bob wants me to shout out. Check your favorite podcast audio apps to see if Why Don't They Laugh is current. Right now we're on episode 247. And uh, you can follow at Bayonet Bob Bear. He runs my, um, my audio side of Why Don't They Laugh, which is just the live stream at this point. So it's on Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, Google Play, CastBox, Player FM, subscribe and share. Yeah, because we get probably 20 times as many people on those apps that we do on YouTube, Vimeo, and my website, which is amazing. And the cool thing about podcasts, and I'll talk to Dave about this, is uh, when you get fans and listeners from the podcast, they it seems like they really know you. Like when I'm on the road and people are like, yo, I listen to the live stream every morning. I almost at that point trust them where I'm like, oh yeah, let's, uh, let's have just a dinner, me and you, because it means that like just talking about stuff that I enjoy means they probably enjoy it and they're interested in it. It means they probably have an element of intelligence, an element of, um, they don't need shit just flying at them at a thousand cuts a second. You know, they like the, the long, oh, here we go. Here's some Smith. What up, pal? Let me, uh, what's yo, what's going on? I hear you. We're good. We're good okay. now. It's embarrassing how stupid that problem was. No, not at all. It, it's happened to everybody. And I, I was just joking that you probably have been paying Skype in cryptocurrency. And so that's why there was a problem. But not like Bitcoin, like one of the other random ones. No, you're like, like a, <laughs> you're like, the, you're the hipster of currency. <laughs> I'm not, by the way. I don't. I know like nothing about it, and I should know more. People are always furious at me. They're like, "Why haven't you done an episode on Bitcoin?" And it's the answer is just because I don't understand it at all, and I'm, what my episode is going to be like. So you guys were all right. <laughs> I'm the same way. I have like 200 total bucks in uh, like Litecoin or something, and it's just because some dude gave it to me, and I don't know what to do with it at all. But I, I think it's a great idea. My, my problem is I just I just started making a little bit of money last year and Bitcoin was already worth a billion dollars a coin. So it's just like I got to find the new one to get in on. I know it's all about the, like we got to find the next guy on the spectrum that can create gold with math. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, and Eric so we're, Nimmer. We're live already, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Live? And Eric Nimmer just said hi because he said that you gave him advice when he was starting out. And I just uh, put up his special for five bucks and he literally just just wrote to me on Skype. Uh, uh, you know, Dave Smith, that's awesome. He gave me advice early on. So that's cool, dude. My advice was just quit. 
It's brutal. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's not worth it. Your advice. Oh, uh, we are F- Facebook friends. His never. Yeah. Uh, your advice is probably like, as long as there's a state, it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I wanted to rip jokes. And I had a bunch of listeners actually write to me questions they wanted me to ask you. You're a big hit with the Bears. But um, if you have a joke you want to riff, I love uh, just doing joke engineering. Sure. Um, what, just like new stuff I'm working on or whatever? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, let me uh, think. Okay, well, I'm working on one. So, I, I, like, I always have big chunks. Like, I write in, like, long, big chunks. But I've been I've been doing a lot of, like, uh, making fun of the Me Too moment. Yeah. Because I think, I, I think those women need to be put in their place. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh... So I was, I was making a joke about um, the Me Too moment, like coming for comedians, and uh, so like Lu- Louis C.K.'s story. I was like, I have a few punch. I say, uh, I was like, uh, Louis C.K. Got, uh, it got ruined for sexually assaulting himself, uh, and, <laughs> and then I, I compared the story, and then I was like, I, I talked about the Aziz story a little bit, yeah, and um, and I was like, you know, the story with Aziz is that he went out on a date with a girl and they had some drinks and then they went back to his place and they both got naked and they both performed oral sex on each other. And then somewhere Aziz got the wild idea that he could try to have sex with this woman. Right. And like, I do a thing about that. And then basically the, the punch of it all is I was like, you know, I always, I always thought Louis CK was a great comedian. And then the me too moment comes out and you're like, Oh, Louie. And I just, I always thought Aziz sucked balls. And then his Me Too story came out, and I was like, all right, Aziz, I'm with you, bro. That's Never a, respected him more. That's hilarious. That's a funny one, yeah, because Aziz was very different than a lot of the other ones because uh, the only reason I kind of got on him for that is just because of his uh, constant rhetoric of, of like, uh, make some noise if you're a male feminist in the crowd, and, and dudes would be like, all right. And he's like, no, every man needs to be a male feminist. And like, So I'm like, if you're that guy... It's like, fuck you still. No, it- I, I get that completely. Me and you have talked about this topic a bunch because it's such a weird, it's a weird position that we get put in where we'll, we're like the free speech absolutists. Yeah. And then, but then you get in this situation where somebody who's not a free speech absolutist is getting shit for what they said. And then you're in this very weird position. And I've always kind of like been like, well, no, let's just stay consistent and let's be, you know, we're, we're fine. We're for this. And. But I got to admit, it's like when Joy Reid yeah. just got in trouble for the the like homophobic <laughs> slurs or whatever. Yeah, I, it's hard for me to not. It's like I just loved it so much. It's like aha, aha, you want to ruin everyone for this shit. Now, how does it feel, dummy? Right, exactly. That, and that's the thing. Like, I, I think it's similar to uh, people being able to post on my stuff or their own stuff. Where I'm like, listen. I don't need to let you post on my stuff, but that doesn't mean I don't think you should have your voice anywhere you want. And I think it kind of comes down to those type of things. Like you have to play by your own rules uh, in my sphere. That's all I'm saying. Other than that, yeah. like I don't think that any of these people, I don't think Aziz should be put in jail or Joy Reid should be. Um, I, I actually don't think any of these people should even be fired. But part of me is like, if you bring a bat to a basketball game and someone else hits you with a bat, I don't feel bad at all, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, then there's too much, like, like the people, the, the real hardcore alt-right guys, like, their philosophy, I, from what I understand it, is just kind of like, all right, we're playing this game, we're, we're playing identity politics, let's beat them at this game. And I, I don't really like going down that I path. don't like that at all. That's what uh, drew me away from the left, and I, I would never <laughs> want to become that to fight that. Like, like the whole like, um, oh, we're identity, so now I'm I'm white guy. It's like no, now you're playing their game, and that's why they suck. And so right. it's like, oh, you. The only way you can win is by also sucking. Yeah. You know, it's but, like, go ahead. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. Like I'm I'm with you completely. But just in your analogy, it is like if you're playing a basketball game and someone brings a bat in, you can't really beat them with a jump shot. In that analogy, you know what I mean? Like, you, no, you ostracize them from the good group, and then on the outside of the fence, they're gonna realize that they don't get any pussy. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad plan. You know what I mean? It's like you have to let young men want to rise and be better for something, and if you just descend into nihilism, then everyone loses. I think long term, a higher ideal wins. It's just short term. There's a lot of shit that comes with it. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting point. That just even when you say like uh, ostracize them so they can't get pussy, because there's so much of this that's like, that's at the end of the day, it's like that's that's what drives men more yeah, than anything else. Totally. It's like this this feeling of I need to get sex, and the it's weird because I know like a lot of people like our, our good friend Stefan Molyneux, he's done a lot of stuff really really criticizing women and go, and I think he makes a lot of fair points, um, but there it's almost like women might be in a weird way what saves us because at the end of the day women are attracted to real men and they're attracted to like strong men and all those guys who are kind of like you know it's like the the aziz thing what was interesting about that to me is it kind of showed you like he does want to be this dominant guy yeah but he's just trying to get there with this weaselly route and it's like women, you know, like you, you talked about in your most recent appearance in Stefan Molyneux's show with like how great your wife's been through all the stuff you're going through. It's like, oh, because she she believes in what you're doing and she like appreciates the fact that you actually stand for something. Yeah. And um, so that's like that that might save us. Yeah, totally. And I think women need to call out other women. Peterson's talked about that because the thing about women, they have this uh, kryptonite that men can't really get that aggressive with them. Mm -hmm. So that's like uh, women almost have to call out the crazy ones because like I do a bit about how white girls are ruining everything that everyone offended is is like a white girl and they're the ones that, that make everyone have a bad time where it's like I happen to have a friend who's friends with a mailman named Jamal. So shut <laughs> up, you know, and uh, and women start <laughs> clapping like, yeah, we hate that girl, too. And I'm like, you guys got because in, in our culture now you're seeing this like distorted feminization like like when it like on facebook i always get these messages that something you said was bad and this is a warning like be better that's so female to do that like men ha say what you did and how to not do it again like you broke a rule from our game that we've established and unless you unless you fix that you can't play but yet the female tendency is more like um you know i'm sad or like I'm hurt and like why doesn't matter, just be better and vague. And and I'm starting to see that with like real rules and corporations. And I'm like, what post? They don't even say what post it is. They don't even say what rule I broke. And the rules are literally like, you can't mock any group or individual or sell anything. And you're like, oh, so that's <laughs> anything. You know? And, and I just find that very bizarre, you know? Yeah, it, it is. The whole thing is really, really strange. And right, and, and what you're touching on is right at the core of it, which is really that white women have somehow, in this ridiculous leftist intersectionality f philosophy, if you can even call it that, yeah. they have pulled the greatest trick of all, which is to convince people that they're part of the like oppressed group. <laughs> white white women, look, everybody, like Jordan Peterson says, right, like everybody is oppressed to some degree by some different factors. And if you go back more than 50 years, just by the economic realities, everybody's oppressed by today's standards. But white women have been the most privileged group throughout all of Western civilization. There is no question about it. If it, When it comes to the real hardcore, like the boats going down, who's yeah. going to get to live? Uh, there's a war, who, who gets drafted and who doesn't? There's right. no one who's been more protected than white women. So just, oh my God, that shit drives me crazy. I know, and so much of this, uh, of our culture, as far as like um, protection of women and, and being a good guy and supportive and all that stuff comes from childbirth. And also like a time when, when like many of them died in childbirth, like that's a, that's like the war that they have fought for uncountable amount of generations. And then all of a sudden that's all over and they still are in this position of just like, you know, they, they, they get, um, they get to vote, but they don't have to go to war or be part of like the, the fire brigade. And, you know, like even when that was a lot of women didn't want to vote for that reason in the beginning, they're like, Oh no, we don't want to be part of the like the awful shit that you guys have to do, you know? Yeah, no. Hey, you just you're like video froze, but I can still hear you. Am I? Am oh, I, good I, I can end? fix that. That happens to me quite a bit. All right. So oh. if I okay. go like this and this, is it? Am I back? Yep, you're back. Was I just frozen, like looking awesome, or was I looking like a real dickhead? It was somewhere in between. It wasn't like one of the. It wasn't like one of the pictures, of those articles that are trashing you puts like, out. But it was like. <laughs> yeah, like I'm just going like this. <laughs> it's dude it, but all that shit's uh winding down a little bit and man i, I just want to say thanks for your support because uh on uh on part of the problem which you guys should all subscribe to 
uh, you you like made a point to to say what I was doing and didn't misrepresent me and have my back in a time when a lot of people were just frozen. And now it's like everything's chill again uh, because a lot of these SJW swarms either just get tired, like they throw a tantrum like a two-year-old and then they take a nap or they just move on to the next thing. But the cool thing is I always know who who is good in the pocket and, and you're, you were really uh, good to me, so I appreciate that. Oh, no, dude. I mean, I, I appreciate what you're doing, man. Like, I, I just think it's incredible, dude. Like, you're, you're fucking, you know, taking a stand like that and kind of putting yourself on the line, I, I think is incredible. And I think it's really, unfortunately, it's like necessary to, to kind of show what you're, you're really up against and what you're dealing with. And no, like you said, I mean, I, I've been talking about this for a few years now, but I mean, the analogy to a three year old is i mean that's like what this whole offended regressive left social justice warrior thing is the whole thing it's just it's infantile yeah. it's like this really weird it's like everything about it, it every every inch of their beliefs is like um i should be provided with free stuff i should, my health care and education all these things should be paid for somebody else who who has to worry about who works for it you know which is like a completely reasonable opinion for a three-year-old to have. Like, <laughs> I should be provided with free stuff and someone else should have to work for it. And also, by the way, my feelings should never be hurt. And I should never really, you know, like it, it's all of this stuff makes perfect sense for a three-year-old. And just like you said, like they have this 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 tantrum. And and I think there's something really valuable, not only in you, you standing up for yourself, but there's something even more valuable in you surviving it and being fine. Dude, I'm glad and you said that. kind of letting everybody yeah. else know. Dude, that's Fine. why, that's one of the reasons I, I fought so hard is because I knew that that had to happen. Because what happens with mobs is they have to execute you in a public square to show the rest of the animals uh, what happens. And when you survive, it's it's like a cultural lightning rod to the to the people trying to hold you back. And kind of like how you were on when you did that pod about when you were debating that that um, that woman from New York City or something on Fox News about uh, Christine Quinn. Yeah. And how you just have that like uh, that see through the matrix ability because of all the, the Austrian economics knowledge you have and stuff. And you just it literally is like watching someone fight. So it's like, OK, like I, I did jujitsu with uh, Crowder recently and it was literally just like I, I'm six, seven. I might as well have been a slug because I didn't have the knowledge of like the stuff that he knows. And I'm kind of like that when it comes to um, to words where it, it, it sucked. And to the outside world, it was it was like, why are you doing this? I'm like, if you don't s stop at some point, it never stops. So just pick anything and and just the real N word is no. And when you say that, like you will just get just arrows like 300 at you. But if you survive, it actually does a blow to the to the authoritarian culture that's that's so crazy right now. And it also robs like what you just described about the three year old mentality. I do manual labor every day simply to make beer taste good. <laughs> yeah. Like if you don't work and struggle and hurt and burn and like, like I have like scars on my hands from working and it's like, um, it, you literally don't taste beer. You know, it's like monogamy makes sex way better. You know, it's like when you, when you love someone and get to that like 80th level of intimacy, you look back at your like drunken nights wondering, where you are and you just had sex with somebody and it, it just it literally is like mcdonald's food where you're like what is that you're robbing someone of the real life experience yeah and and that is like it, it's there's something about it that's just really connected to what what a man is yeah and that's that's so much of what we've lost in in our current society it's like this this the role that men play and i think just to your point it's like you know, I, I don't have these numbers like off the top of my head, but you know, the, like during the Great Depression, uh, they'll say it was something like 70 something percent of, of America worked in agricultural uh, life. And, and so like even post industrial revolution, there's still all these people. And then like, you know, my grandfather, his whole generation, they worked in factories. It was like really tough work. And it wasn't really until, you know, the late 60s, 70s, 80s, when work became this cubicle and, and like an office space like that. And, and I think there's almost something like when men were all doing men work, it just yeah. kept society in that mode where nobody would really have these debates because it's like, yeah, well, you do you do man work. So obviously you do that. And now it's like we lost that. And, and men just kind of became pussified, <clears throat> excuse me, and like gave that up. And it's like, man, this is the problem is that all these people like 
I talk about this on my show, like, uh, Hillary Clinton isn't a social justice warrior. Hillary Clinton isn't a progressive. No. She's not like somebody who's concerned with gay rights, LGBTQ, TZX. Like she, Hillary Clinton doesn't give a fuck about any of that. She's a fascist. That's yeah. how, that's yeah. how she is. It's just she uses these people. So the, the problem is that they all become useful idiots for this fucking for for the real enemy, which is the state. And the problem with all these guys being kids, being three year olds, it's not that. Go have a fucking temper tantrum. I don't give a shit. It's just that they always, because three-year-olds need parents, and that yeah. parent always ends up being the state. So that's always one step away is they call it, well, Hillary Clinton will come have our back. And oh, like, I that's, know. that's where shit gets dangerous. Real dangerous. And they did that to uh, inner city black community, and they're trying to do it to the whites as well now, and single moms. And they, they take these, they're almost like... Um, like sexual prayers, like, like pedophiles, where they seek out the, um, the vulnerable. You know, well, they'll, they'll see a vulnerable population and be like, all right, I'll make them need me. You know, like the, the kid without a dad to protect him who's always walking around alone at five. That's the guy the dude in the van goes after. And that's what right. these, these statists do. Like they went after, um, you know, inner city uh, working class black people, single mothers, uh, gay people. And then they kept expanding it. That's why they keep needing victim groups. To the point where they're now like trans midget pedophiles. They need rights too, you know, because they're still they're, they keep trying to acquire these voting blocks that are that, are, that that need them, and it's really really weird and gross. Yeah, no, ab absolutely, and that's why the thing is like you can't, and this is just like a anybody knows this, but you can't, you can't give an inch to those guys. Not, not one like, inch. I mean, if you if you give them one inch, it's and, and an inch. It's so it's so tempting because you're like, I don't really need that inch. Right. You know, like whatever. I can give you that inch. But once they're in, they're just taking the next one and the next one and the next one. <laughs> you give the LGBT an inch, they'll take eight. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and w one of my favorite things about your grandfather that I always thought was interesting, that's the same with my grandfather, who was a lead miner, is they were well read. Like you've talked about that where you're like my grandfather and his friends would would still read like high literature with like calluses on their bloody hands. And that, I think an educated population is so important uh, to not be controlled. You know, like people yeah. just know what the school, what the uh, government schools have told us, you know, like what Darwin is versus have they read, read Descent of Man where he compares the Irish to, to chimps and thinks that they should be uh, eradicated. You know, it's like, if you actually read the primary documents of a lot of these things that we're just told about, it's uh, it's some pretty wild shit. Yeah, no, there's no question about that, man. And it's like you get that's why I like half the time, you know, when like they'd show those old things where Jordan Peterson's like uh, when he was on campus and, the, you know, it's like the LGBTQ activists are yelling at him and they're yeah. like, Here, it's my rights. It's my this. It's like I almost I, I'd say, I've said this on my podcast, but I almost want to just come in there and just go like, um, uh, hey, so uh, so what happened in the Bolshevik Revolution? Right. Like just, just like just, just let me just ask you some basic history questions. Forget any of this. Oh, dude, outrage. they don't know anything. They know though. they don't know Che. Like the the guy they, in their T shirt. They don't know. It's like, uh, do you know he he he, sh he blew a twelve year old's brains out because he was trying to rescue his father who was about to be assassinated for his political beliefs? They'd be like, right. I got this at Urban Outfitters, okay? And you're yeah, like, it's... you guys are just, they're just mind washed. And um, I think it's crazy because I, I, I was a World War II history major focused on authoritarianism and I, I studied it in the Czech Republic and all this. And I always thought it was it was the right. And as I got older, I just kept seeing all this shit that I learned about and what to watch for, because my whole thing was I, I always wanted to be the guy who fought the Nazis early, you know, because everyone thinks that they'd be the guy. But statistically, that they're not the guy. So I was like, okay, what are the patterns for authoritarianism? And I thought it was the right because I was always told the Nazis were the right. And then I started seeing it from the socialists left. And that's what really messed my mind up where I was like, why is the left doing all the things that are the warning signs to authoritarianism? I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, it, it, that, that is really fascinating. And I'm sure that's a big part of why you're able to like kind of see, or, you know, kind of figure a lot of this stuff out. But to me, I, I always remember once I, once I first started getting into like uh, libertarianism and reading a lot of the literature and stuff, it always seemed amazing to me that like the political spectrum that, that everybody accepts is just completely fake. It's, it's fake. completely made up. This idea that like, okay, so all the way on the right, you have 
the national socialists, and then all the way on the left you have the socialists. <laughs> right. And 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 then they'll kind of like hide behind this thing. It's like once you get to the polar opposites, there are similarities between the two. But you're like, so how how is it that you know Mussolini is able to just seamlessly transition from being a socialist to being a fascist? Like, why does that make any sense? And then you you just realize if we're talking about the state, we're talking about political ideology. A spectrum that makes way more sense would be like no government all the way on one side and totalitarian government on the other side. Like it's yeah. like anarchy to North Korea. Right. And if you look at it that way, you're like, oh, OK, so the Soviets had like this totalitarian government and then the Nazis are like an inch over here, right. like, like an inch away from them. They're, they're basically exactly the same, which like, oh, you're allowed to own a business and we can just tell you exactly what to do with it. Yeah, it's just controlling language. Like when I'm like, oh, I'm I'm on the right, and people are like, oh, Nazi. I'm like, no, way, no. It's it's, and then I just try to explain it, but it's so exhausting. But it's almost like a, a sleazy guy goes up to a girl at a bar and says, okay, this is the spectrum: sex with condom, sex no condom. <laughs> and it's like the girl doesn't even realize that she can just walk away, and it's like she doesn't have to choose this little range of awful. And it's now, just like the sales technique. One extreme end of the spectrum, it does kind of start to look like the other extreme end of the spectrum too. Right. But no, I'm the most anti fuck me person out there. So just fuck me without a condom. I know, and being a dad now too, it's very eye opening. It's how you manipulate children as you say, this is your food options. You know, the right wing is broccoli, the left wing is cauliflower. Like there's nobody just being like, What about pizza? You know, because that's not even on the table. And then like you have government schools that I'm now starting, I've been reading a lot of John Taylor Gatto and it's like the amount of garbage, it's about compliance training. And that's why we're thinking about homeschooling at least for a bit because we have boys. And now the government's gotten so big that even when I was a kid, like facing what I faced as a creative intelligent person in public schools, it's nothing like now. Like now they like hate men. Where it's like if a boy, like we had recess where we used to, just beat the shit out of each other. And now it's like gender unicorns and like everything's a hate crime. And I can't imagine yeah, that. It's it's really crazy. And and to me, it's like, you know, if you just, if you, if you know, cause they keep changing the language, but I, I this is like always my challenge to people on, on the left where I'll go like, just, just for a thought experiment. Okay. Even if, even if I'm completely wrong, just entertain for a thought experiment, right. the idea that racism is hating any race based on, on their race and that it's not like this power plus privilege right, plus it's okay right. to hate white people. Just for a thought experiment, just grant me that maybe it's also racist to hate white people for being white. And then you look at that and if you were to grant me that thought experiment, even though me and you just said like, we're not big fans of the alt-right, Richard Spencer is not half as racist as just your average person on the left. Totally. Like if, if, if you actually listen to Richard Spencer, like what he'll say about, you know, he'll be like, yeah, I want to live in a white ethno state. And I think black people have the right to live in their ethno state. And that, you know, good luck to him. I have nothing against him, but I just want to be separate. Yeah. That's the, that's way better than what the left says about I, white I people. I totally agree. Like, that's the thing. I completely disagree with Richard Spencer, but when people are like, Oh, you, you'd have coffee with Richard Spencer? I'd be like, dude, I'd have coffee with a socialist. That's yeah. fucking way crazier. Their body count. Someone, one of the bears did the math and um, literally did all the math. Like 1.8% of all world deaths in the 20th century were caused by socialism. Yeah. <laughs> it's I just... Mean, I yeah, and if you want to throw in, you know, like national socialism and just like militaries in general, yeah, which are, you know, the military is is the socialized defense force uh, of a nation. So, I mean, you're going to get numbers way higher than that. It's it's amazing to me to see in the media where it's like, oh my God, so we we got a leak that says that somebody criticized Saint John McCain. <laughs> my God, the, the, someone was not worshiping at the altar of John McCain, and it's like. Dude, you could – if you were to take – like say something about David Duke, you could say whatever you want to say about David Duke. You could say, I hope David Duke gets tortured and, and thrown in you know, a pit of acid or something like that. No one would care. Now, yeah. I'm a Jew. I'm not a huge fan of, of David <laughs> Duke. But like you want to compare his humanitarian track record to John McCain? Right, right, right. John McCain? John <laughs> McCain has mountains of corpses 
<laughs> it just in his trail from what he's advocated for his entire life, his entire life. This this motherfucker will roll out of brain surgery to make sure he casts a vote to go slaughter a few more people in whatever third world fucking hellhole we're, we're going to war in next. And it's like, oh, but that guy's above reproach somehow. Right, right, right. Well, that's the thing is like... um. They, they make this this big and, and the thing is, is I'm not for white ethno states or any of that shit. But just like what you said, I don't have this vitriolic emotional response to these guys because I see it fairly objectively, I think, where I'm like, well, MTV is says way crazier shit than David Duke. I just don't want to be defined by my enemies. I don't want to be defined. It's like scar tissue will overcompensate for a wound. I don't want to be that guy where it's like. Because the left sees you as shit because you're white, we got a group that's going to see you as awesome because you're white. And I'm like, how about you see me as awesome because I can play piano and I have a hot wife? You know, like, <laughs> I don't want white to be anything because, like, if you just time travel a little and look at my uh, lineage, white didn't exist until recently. It's like if you put a German and a Scandinavian and a Czech Jew together and then I marry a Norwegian Mexican, it's like, what are we? It's like we're just people. And, and you, you start getting to a point where you go to Ireland and you see that uh, the Catholics and the Protestants have more hate for each other. And they I mean, they almost have the same freckle patterns. It's, it's like it's just this tribal horseshit that I'd rather be with people like you. Like my tribe is people that when you make a good point, they look excited and not threatened. And that's why I think we hit it off right away. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree completely. And it's it's just this kind of, um, you know, like, oh. Uh, the other thing about like not you know like not uh, again I disagree with all of them I've never held back from how I disagree with the alt right I've I've talked about this when I've had some of their leaders on my show like I don't agree with them I make my views very clear but it does seem after a while it's almost like this trick of the left where it's like so so you know it's it's like I don't know I don't spend you know like me and you probably spend a lot more time bashing the commies than the Nazis because everybody already knows Hitler was evil. Exactly. Like that's, that's not a secret. Everybody knows that. As comedians, we see it as hacky. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But that's right. It's, it's kind of like, so So you're telling me there's this one group uh, uh, on the right uh, called the alt-right or whatever you will, who is literally, they can't, it, they can't go on a television station, a radio station. They can't even speak at their own rallies because they get shut down. Every single person in the mainstream right disavows them. They're horrible. In fact, it was such a scandal that Donald Trump said there might have been a few good people within them. Like that was the right. scandal of the year. And then you have the, this Antifa people on the left who, if anyone ever organizes a fucking comedy show or a free speech march, or if they were like, I support the guy who won the presidency, they're, they're, you're going to get a bike lock on the on the top of your head. And like that, that they just kind of go by free. Like, fuck dude, it, especially in the entertainment industry, I because I was um, always in a pretty high ranking with the Hollywood Illuminati. And it was like, a big shift in my life was when I did that um, that event with Malanu and all those guys and Gavin, and there was that video of us four talking, and people would be like, man, I can't even begin. I'm like, who? They're like, Malanu. I'm like, oh, you mean one of the smartest people you'll ever meet? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like, he hates w women. It's like, well, his mom beat the fuck out of him, and the welfare state is pretty fucked up. Um, uh, uh, Al Sharpton is the devil. Like, you know, it's like Malinu is like a kind, like he's preaching non-aggression. And um, if, like if people have any disagreements, like I'm sure you have disagreements with him, I have disagreements with him, but the dude is, is someone I really look up to intellectually and morally. I, yeah, and, and there's nobody, you'll never get anybody who's on Stefan Molyneux's intellectual level, who puts out the volume of work that he puts out, where there's not like at least one or two things where you go, oh, I don't know about that, or I, I think I might disagree on that. By the way, I, I should preface by saying about 95% of the time when I've disagreed with Stefan Molyneux on something, six months later, I realized he was completely right about me it. Me too, so I'll, me too, I'll, dude. I'll, I'll give him that. Um, but yeah, no, I was reading like the Southern Poverty Law Center that just fucking hack 
organization. They wrote this piece on him about how, you know, and it'll be like, oh, he had this guy on his show and he gave this presentation about race and he did this or that. And it's like, yeah, you know, they never start by going like, so Stefan Molyneux is a guy whose entire philosophy centers around non-aggression, uh, non-aggression, whose number one issue has been that you should not abuse children. You know, it's right, like, right, right. No one ever wants to like describe him that way. It's like, yeah, what a monster. Oh, what a dude, monster. exactly. A and it's like, parent. and the way that the media frames everything, they'll say like controversial comedian Owen Benjamin or contra- they never say that about Martin Luther King Jr. or Gandhi. Gandhi like fucked his nieces. It's like, yeah. it's not controversial figure Mahatma Gandhi. It's like Gandhi, like, hated black people. Like, Martin Luther King Jr. stole his entire doctorate and was a communist and was constantly doing gay orgies and shit. It's like, yeah. don't get me wrong, I like his message about how uh, people should be treated as, as by the content of their character and all that stuff, but, like, every person is in some way a controversial character and and you just see the media frame people on their bad list and and i i'm not the type that says like um you know i don't agree with him about everything because that's almost like a, a moral cop out to be like but i want people to know that no one agrees with everyone on anything like we're not clones of each other we're not in a cult like that's natural and you just respect people for the whole thing and Man, I've got so disappointed in comedians that started seeing people as toxic. I'm like, we are the people that aren't like that. We listen to the artists that that doesn't that people don't know about yet. We we perform in anywhere, you know, because I, I performed uh, in the most dodgy fucking places. Like I've done open mics at strip clubs before. So I, I always thought that the moral landscape for comedians was just open, but I didn't realize it was just leftist where I'm like, oh, you can't perform with people on the right that are controversial like so you're a fucking clone you know yeah it's and, and it's like they're got they've just i don't know man it's it's really it's fascinating but it's also like just so disappointing but what's happened to the left over the last 10 years and it brought uh, it brought comedians down with them like i, I don't know it, it just became this dominant culture where it's like it's like you're you're always outraged and you're outraged over the dumbest fucking shit yeah like it's just like i don't know like like i feel like 90 percent of the stuff that the, that the left is outraged by today could just be answered with who gives a shit yeah who gives dude. a shit but it's it, it's good for free market guys like us though uh by libertas uh dave smith special on itunes and like because i just had to pay back 20 grand to a publisher because um you know i stepped out of bounds and whatnot and i'm spiraling and i'm lying in bed and amy just is like we have it and I'm like, holy shit, that's right. I'm like, there is a massive amount of people that will buy our specials completely independently produced because they're so sick of being talked down to by a bunch of commie psychos. Yeah, well, you'll, you'll see that. And like, you know, they do everything they can. Like even you'll see someone like, you know, like them, them you know, getting you off Twitter or like whatever and the putting pressure on your publisher and all this stuff. But then at the same time, you see so many of these guys, like I'll see these guys who, who you know, like get on comedy central and stuff like that which like i think comedy central it's it's in their official like uh rules for corporate conduct that we only hire like brown nerd comedians or something like that <laughs> yeah I, brown I and know. non-threatening it's like yeah. oh so brown it's like like he's gonna like brown like big dick brown they're like not big dick brown that's the crazy thing about it too man it's emasculated like, so brown it's right emasculated browns that's the only people we're allowed to hire but you'll see them where it's like you know, they tweet something and it's got like three re- retweets. Like n- no one really cares. No one cares. And and, and I just, I, I don't, you know, like I, when I first started comedy and I'm sure, you know, like you too, it was kind of before this, this, this world existed. And you just kind of want the, the typical successful things. Like I want to get on TV and I want to do this and I want and you, and you got a lot of those things. But after like this whole thing developed, I'm I'm like very quick to like, oh, I'm I'm fine with this. Oh, like, dude, I don't really give a shit. I'm like I'm almost really embarrassed about getting something. I'm I just all... want I, I just want my numbers to grow. I want my podcast to get more and more listeners, which is it's been doing for the last few years. Oh, but, you're like, crushing. Yeah, like I don't I don't care about like oh, but I'd really love to have an HBO special or I'd really love to have a Netflix or this or that. It's like sure those things would be fine, but it, either way, as long as I'm selling more, I don't I don't care. Dude, prestige is a is a slavery trick. Like, dude, I've had two Comedy Central specials. I've, like, all this shit. And when I'll do clubs now or a theater and I see the credits they put up, I swear to God I get embarrassed where it's like, 
seen on Fallon, Schumer. I'm like, no, no, say part of the problem, Rogan, Crowder. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. I don't want to be associated with Communist Central, you know, because I have all those credits. We'll be like, except for Sandler movies I love. I, I have a huge amount of respect for Sandler and Vaughn and a bunch of those guys. But like some of these credits, I'm like, I don't want people to think I'm like approved by the fucking Soviet gulag police. Oh, before yeah. before you go, I got a couple questions for you from my Patreon guys. Let's um, do it. Okay, Jester Bear asks, uh, does he have a unique method to come up with his material, either for his comedy or his podcast? And does he have any organizational tips for you, Winky Face? It's pretty fun. Oh, my God. Uh, organization is not my strong suit. So I don't know what to... With with comedy stuff, I, I literally just like... With stand-up, I just I have ideas. I think of something that I think there's, that are, is absurd or funny, and then I'd like to just take it to stage and have fun with it. And for part of the problem, I'm like 90% unscripted. I'll just, they'll, like, sometimes a topic just hits, and I'm like, I know I can rant on this. And then I like to kind of find it in the moment. So, sorry, that's not a great answer. No, it's a great answer. Dude, the fire Bernstein is really growing on me. Yeah, he's great. Dude, I love the I love the, the fire. The I like, like, little nicknames like that. Um, uh, Zach, I don't know what Zach's referring to, but it sounds interesting. Did he almost get in a fight with Gino Bisconti on a podcast, LOL? His last appearance on David Webb's show was great. Oh, uh, well, thank you. I, I, yeah, that was fun. And uh, yeah, me and Gino came. Uh, I, I got pretty annoyed at Gino one night. But you know, I love Gino to death. I've I've known Gino for years and years. He's a great guy. He's just, you know, a crazy old drunk. Uh, <laughs> dude, you, like, but... you, you like this one, dude. This says, uh, when are y'all going to do a comedy tour together? Blue Collar meets Hi uh, Hayek. That's a... <laughs> you guys are some of my favorites. Appliance Bear. All right, here's the final question for you. Um... Ask him where he thinks free speech and social media are going, where libertarians and conservatives aren't silenced and have a neutral place to hang together. So I, I Stephen Molyneux made this point before, and I think he's right. I, and I, I think this anytime anyone always asks me, like, where is this going or what's the future of libertarianism or this? It's like, I don't believe it's written in stone, man. I don't. It's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I was on I, I went on uh, last year on the Contra, Cru uh, Contra Cruz, which is uh, uh, Tom Woods and Bob Murphy, who I highly guys. recommend to people. You, yeah. You've been on Tom Woods' show and stuff, and, and they do this cruise. It's a lot of fun. And I remember one person said, I was doing like a question and answer segment, and one person goes, uh, they go, uh, seeing has, how we'll probably never achieve anarcho-capitalism in our lifetime, what do you think, blah, 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 blah. And I, I remember just going like, no, listen, we will achieve it in our lifetime. We will. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if someone here on Tom Woods retreat doesn't believe it, then it's definitely not going to fucking happen. Right. So like you, you got to just decide we're going to win and then I'm going to do everything possible to make us win. So, cause it's not written in stone. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, okay. It does seem like we're at the point where an empire collapses. It does seem like our culture is being deteriorated, but you know what? I'm also having a Skype conversation with Owen Benjamin. That's going out to thousands of people from my fucking living room. Right so on. that's kind of new too, you know? So, so let's try to fight and win this thing. Yeah. Cause that's almost like the, the trap of the left is the utopian philosophy where it's like my whole thing is is family and community where it's like you structure your life and do the things to make good people that are, are that are less trickable and less manipulated and just be a like be what is as corny as it sounds and i'm quoting a guy who uh who probably molested his nieces and, and hated black people gandhi but um you know like be the change you want to see in the world and i think that's uh something that a lot of people should live by where it's like you do it you you know like i didn't like the comedy coming out so i produced nimmer special and two of my specials and that's that's like how i see beating it is just do it versus just saying how you're going to take someone down or how how to make someone else fail that almost will, will trap you into the same if i had my way i'd do communist right bullshit you know yeah, and just to just to agree with like what you're saying there, like it's something, and this is why I think like you know you're such a great role model for for some of these younger guys because a lot of our audience is like younger guys. Yeah, it's like that's the other thing that the whole sexual revolution, post-feminist world that we live in is broken. Is it's like yeah, man, there really is something to this this idea of family values. And I, I've you know I've, I've been out there and I, I was like a single comedian for a long time, and I, I you know like it's like guys. 
find a fucking great chick and be really, really good to her. And totally. when I say be really, really good to her, that doesn't mean you're like some weak little, like Jordan Peterson says, the rabbit, who's just like, oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> it's like, no, you be a fucking man, you be a leader, and you protect her, and build your own family, and be a good person. That's more important than any of this other shit is. That's awesome. Yeah, because you got a great girl, too, and she respects yeah. the hell out of you, and you can see that. Uh, Dave's getting married, Dave's engaged, which is awesome. Proud of you, man. I'm, uh, like, Because you see these dudes... They keep thinking it's like, they're like, dude, I'm about to fuck. And it's like, have you ever made life with that cock of yours? Make it happen. You know, I'm like, I don't even like fucking anymore if she's not ovulating. What is this, preseason? Am I a show pony? Let's make life. All right. Uh, so, guys, follow Dave at um, Twitter. Apparently, that's still a thing. At, at, at Comic Dave Smith and uh, part of the problem. And, and you're on Fox a lot. What, what's the show you're on, Fox? Well, not anymore. Now now I'm only doing the CNN shows because they. Uh, I'm, I'm working for the enemy now. Are you I'm the on, bad uh, guy now? Like you're, you're yeah. the CNN giving the other side? That's hilarious. Yeah, but I'm on, uh, on SE Cup Unfiltered regularly on uh, Headline News. And part of the problem, my podcast. Check that out. Awesome, Dave. It's a pleasure. Let's do this more often. Absolutely, brother. Good All to right. talk to you, man. Later, bro. Later. All right, that was the great Dave Smith, man. How great is that guy? How great is Dave Smith? No, Dave is, um, he's on, oh, dude, yeah, thank you, brother. After the stream, can I talk to you about, uh, oh, that's from some, this is from Judah, postmodernist gender brainwashing going on in my school. Yeah, Judah, we should, we should have you on sometime. He's a young dude. No, Dave is, uh, he's on Legion of Skanks with a bunch of dudes. It's a good podcast. And I did that, and that's where I met Dave, and we just hit it off, because he's just, the dude's got massive balls on him, massive. And he was saying, um, like, he'd say stuff that I, w I, at the time, was very against, but I never got mad at him or never felt any animosity towards him, because you can just see in his eyes that he's just, uh, just got balls on him, and he's just smart as fuck, and just committed, and just a good human being. So I'm really glad that that went down. Let me read some of these Feed the Bears, uh, see what you guys thought of that, and I'll come over to YouTube, and then we'll jam it out and call it a day. This is from Coder Bear. Hey, Big Bear, app's coming along well, and a bunch of bears have been stress testing the chat during your streams. Pretty much everyone is crazy awesome, except Ian, just kidding. That said, please remind people they can email unbearables.dev at gmail.com to gain access, and hopefully it'll be ready to unleash on the public at large very shortly. The Bears have been priceless in helping vet the app, finding bugs, and putting up with um, janky functionality. I think you'll be very happy with the results. Come join us in the chat sometime. Coder Bear was going to request Come Sail Away, but you opened with it like a boss. Hell yeah, buddy. And also, uh, unbearablenewsnetwork.com is coming along insane. We had a big group chat last night with, um, with Texan and Nimmer and Delev and everybody, and um, the, the graphics that they're doing and the organization that they're doing, you know, like Panther and Mark and um, uh, Coddington and everybody, it's, it's mind blowing what they're setting up. So we will have something shortly to you guys. I, once I saw the quality that they were putting together and the organization and the technical skills that they were putting together, that's why I haven't been rushing that. And I haven't been just like banging out the news stories because, um, when we drop, when we start doing it, it's going to blow your mind. It's going to be, I don't want to build it up too much, but it's like, it's going to be the best thing you've ever seen. I don't want to build it up too much, but nothing is better. <laughs> um, have you heard of Brandon Tatum? He's a, um, he's a guy. I think you could really enjoy talking to you. Not sure how to contact him though. Also, when can we get you to Indianapolis? Well, Judah's in Indianapolis. He keeps wanting me to perform at his dad's church, which I'll eventually agree to. It just takes me months of wearing me down until I finally do something like I will be doing Kyle's song today because I made that in my head that that was definitely happening because Kyle's one of the original bears I perform at open mics occasionally and might be able to talk to the big man of the club and see what I can do well I'm sure I've already headlined all those clubs I want to do Judas Church I, I you know I've done I've headlined every club in Indy I've done um, Tom and Bob and Tom like a hundred times that's what me and Dave were talking about. I'm no spring chicken to this game. I just, I don't give a flying fuck about prestige in the comedy world or like the paths you're supposed to take. None. I'd rather perform at a friend's place 
than a club where it's like, hey, well, we're gonna, well, this is a club that everyone knows and you want your name in lights? It's like, no, I'd rather ha no one know where I'm performing until the last minute. By the way, uh, a lot of you guys that have bought tickets for Portland, Bellevue and Richland have emailed me. I've gotten back to a few of you, but I'm still trying to fucking get the bear phone sorted. I can't accept any more bear phone. I'm sorry. Or else it'll just be meaningless. Because I, I, ha I really want to be able to write back to everybody on the bear phone. And I'm like a week behind. Uh, because it's a good problem to have. It's been an overwhelming success as far as people being on board and helping the show and everything. But I can't go anymore. Or else it'll just not be a bear phone. Uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. At all. How did I start talking about the bear phone? Indy? I don't know. You want to see your name in lights? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So people have been emailing me about the the tickets for Richland, Bellevue, and Portland and um, about like where the where the shows are. I'm not I don't we, we don't release the locations of the shows until the week of just in case, you know, the backlash against me has been dying down. Thank God. But just just so that people don't face unnecessary phone calls from socialists. I just will email you. So just make sure that any email I sent to you is not junk. Like that happened in Pittsburgh. We lost like a hundred good men because, uh, and had to refund a bunch of tickets, which is fine. A lot of people said we didn't have to, but we still did. I think I know that that was, I I'm almost hundred percent. We did. I, Amy definitely did that. But, um, if we tell you, uh, where the show is, or we had to switch shows in Pittsburgh and some people like the, the emails were going to the junk folder, which is a, which sucks. But, uh, we'll tell you where the, where the shows are. If you come, I'd love to be a feature, not an opener. I don't have enough material com completed a lot in the works though. Dude, send a video. We'll, we'll analyze it on here. Keith, I've noticed that being inclusive means harassing someone you hate and smear until they are silenced frauds and sociopaths. Damn right. Keith, Ashley, I'm going to be speaking with Malanu tonight for his Freedom Radio show this evening about my challenges as a young female who wishes to have both a career and be an awesome mom someday. In the past year, I switched from being a Bernie-supporting liberal to realizing that my values are traditional conservative ones. This is going to be a good talk. He's going to have a lot to talk, say to you. Uh, along with this change in mindset, I've realized that family is way more important than a career in the long run. However, I love what I do, and I feel that by giving it up, I will be missing out. I'm a bit nervous for the conversation with Stefan, and I was wondering if you might have any advice beforehand. Thank you, Tiger Bear. Just be totally honest. Like, don't... Like, Malinu has one of the, like, the biggest bullshit meters I've ever seen in a human. Like, his antenna are, like, this high. So just don't even try to bullshit him. And if you're honest, he'll give you great advice. It'll be a great show. And, um... I've got, I have no, I have no idea what he'll say, but I, you're the type of person I'm sure he would love to talk to. So that's really cool. Uh, I don't know what you do, but I'm guessing you're not missing out and you can always do what you love from home or part time or something. I think you're absolutely right to question, um, the Bernie bro, uh, work until you die with no kids mentality. Cause it's absolutely torturous to most women. This is from Allison. If you don't have time to read this on your live stream, no worries, because I know you have tons of super chats that are way more interesting, I'm sure. Don't sell yourself short like that. Just wanted to show my support, how you've affected my life. I've been listening to your stream since November of 2017. Actually, I've been listening to your comedy longer. So I think that's how I ended up seeing you on YouTube. I still have a Pandora station created with your name because I love your comedy so much. I started listening to comedy while driving around town every day because parenting can be a bit stressful and the comic relief is definitely needed. I felt all the emotions, emotions watching your free speech battle. Despite the pitfalls, you are making a difference and I commend you on your resilience to stay the course. I was extremely moved by your A Hill to Die On video. I'm thankful you didn't bend your morals. Not bending gives others hope who feel the same way you do. It's also been very interesting to watch your perspective on cultural issues gravitate towards a more conservative view that hold a more Christian-based set of morals, values without having to use religion as your reasoning. That, I like, I like how you said that. Yeah, that's the thing that I, I got weirded out by, by Catholicism growing up, 
And don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing Catholicism. There's a lot of good Catholics and priests out there. But to me, the ought isn't because church. It has to be your own connection it, to me. And I'm not going to speak, I'm not going to Godsplain to anybody. But I like uh, the, the Martin Luther quote, um, every man his own priest. Is that, is that the quote? But that's not ego. That's lack of ego. I, I don't think that it should be commanded by a secular uh, building to be, um, to be, to have a connection to, to Christianity. I think Jesus actually kind of highlighted that pretty elaborately. <laughs> so uh, I like that you said that because that, that was a, that's what made me agnostic for a long time is because I associated a physical church and the people in it with God and not God with God. And I think there's millions of people out there that had the same experience and can relate on that on a deep level. Um, all right. This is long, but I'll try. Oh, this is real long. But I'll try and get to it because I love, I love your heads at. Uh, I grew up in a non-denominational Protestant church that preached the gospel, became a Christian at six. So to have someone affirm the morals, values I believed all these years from a more secular perspective was eye-opening to me. It affirmed that even when we try to take God out of the equation, we really can't because it's in our DNA as much as we try to deny it. I completely concur. If anyone could have been an atheist, it's me. And I have no, like the reconnect, this is one thing that bothers me about a lot of secular atheism isn't that they exist. God bless. Do you. Some of my favorite people are atheists. It, it doesn't mean you're a bad person, but this is the thing that bothers me about a lot of atheists is they think that being religious or Christian or Jewish or, um, those are the good ones in my book. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, uh, is a weakness. Like there's something weak about you where you have to rely on God to get through. It's, it's strength. To me, weakness is nihilism. Weakness is secular nihilism, the pursuit of physical pleasure above ethics, above the future, above the ability to get through problems. There's nothing weaker to me to just say like, what's the point? Let's get drunk and fuck strangers and kill a guy. There's no God. Like what's weaker than that? Someone, a Christian conservative once, when I used to tour colleges, planted a seed in my mind. And for all you out there that just have reasonable, normal conversations with people that don't identify at all with religion, which I wasn't at the time at all, just know that, that these conversations make a difference in their mind, even if it isn't right away. So I'm doing University of South Carolina, and uh, this was years ago, maybe 10 years ago. And I was talking to this um, uh, a Christian fundamentalist who, who came out to the show as a fan, uh, despite my wicked ways, really good guy, student. And I remember him telling me, he's like, the worst case scenario, what? There's no God. We're just dirt. He's like, I still lived a better life. I still was good. He's like, I don't believe that to be true, but what's the worst that can happen? We just live better. And I remember like that was one of the most reasonable things because it never even dawned on me where I'm like, what am I so scared of? Like feeling foolish, like dying and realizing there isn't a heaven and then feeling foolish because that's in our nature as especially men. One thing that men are very, very terrified of is um, uh, embarrassment, public embarrassment. I don't know what it is, something genetic, but we don't want to look like a fucking idiot because in, in front of a lot of people. I don't know. I think it dates back to ancient times when, when being ostracized meant death or meant no reproduction or some shit. I don't know what it is, but what's the worst that can happen? Like, let's say there is no God and you die and it's just blackness for eternity. Oops. And when he said that to me, I was like, man, because so much of my belief in nothing, not nothing. I wasn't an atheist. I didn't have that kind of fucking ego on me. But my, um, my disconnect came partially from that, where I was like, I don't want to seem foolish. And it's like, what? And he kind of relieved that, that fear in me. And then relieving that fear allowed me to explore the natural feeling I had towards God that was natural. 
And I had just been like, well, it's almost like, well, if I ask a girl out, what if she says no? It's like, so? Like one way you may meet the love of your life and have a family. The other way you definitely won't. All right. So um, just thought I'd share with you and Amy. All right. So you might not agree with that. I've read this book with Bringing Up Boys by Dr. James Dobson. All right. So she keeps right. She wants to be verified as Bayou Bear. Welcome, Bayou Bear. I'm originally from South Louisiana and grew up in the Bayou. God bless you and your family, Allison. That was a very beautiful message. I appreciate you, Allison. David, sorry for the paltry dollar. Dude, it's fine. Do people think I need, like, I, I, I want money? So, like, it's so funny. It's like, dude, some people are like, oh, it's all I have. I'm like, then don't give me any. Like part of me likes this, like even if it's just a dollar because it organizes the messages really well and it gets out of spam. That's it. So if you want to donate to the show, feed the bear, help out, do that. If not, just know that I never view you as like cheap or something. It's a, it's an honor that you even watch, let alone super chat me. It's fucking crazy how lucky I am. So just know that. All right. I can't just talk this much about every fucking message though, or else I won't be able to get to Kyle. All right. I, can I be verified as Discount Dragon Bear? Welcome, Discount Dragon Bear. I loved your riff on my Discount Dragon Shop name from yesterday. I played it for my lady and she was laughing so hard. I totally didn't expect that. Awesome. UNN segment idea. Cryptozoology. Is it zoology? Cryptozoology alert. Reporting from the field. Frantic Democrats desperate for more illegal immigrant votes are scouring the southern border trying to pass out mail and ballots to migrating packs of chupacabra. Unfortunately, no new voters were registered, but on the bright side, the starving chupacabra have a new high-protein food source, leaflet tears. I've never even heard of leaflet tears. That's a great word. Film at 11, wildlife reporter. That's some high-concept shit. I'd have to see it. I mean, it's definitely funny, but we have to then know what... what, what I, see, I didn't even know what chupacabra was until I saw South Park. So... I like where your head's at, though. I just have to see the video of it to understand it. All right. Hey, Big Bear. Real Dakota Bear, a.k.a. the funny one here. I'm the aspiring comedian. You read my super chat yesterday and said you would watch my stand-up set from the ND Comedy Contest this past weekend. I was in the process of sending it yesterday, but I had to leave the super chat. But I did send it to you this morning, so I hope it came through and you'll watch it over the live stream. I'd love to hear what you and the Bears think of it. Thanks, Big Bear. Okay, the order right now will be... Kyle, definitely. I want to talk a little bit about what my old piano teacher said, and then I will look for you. Jordan. All right, let me... Someone remind me. Tommy. Hey, Owen, my girlfriend of eight months broke up with me last Friday because she was emotionally unavailable. She was a college left feminist. Dude, she, she just saved your life, bro. I'm the first son of an Asian immigrant. Her parents were in an open relationship, and her sister was trans. Interesting. She did not like my political views or the various speakers of the intellectual dark web. Apparently I'm in the intellectual dark web, by the way. That makes me feel pretty good. I know I'm a good man. My family and friends tell me I dodged a bullet. I would like some reassurance from the Big Bear. Bro, you dodged a cannon ball. And you won't fully believe me, maybe not for years, but you have to understand it doesn't get more like you just won the lottery. Imagine if you had a child with someone who hates you. Cause you sound like a good guy. You'd marry, you know, let's say she got pregnant. You get married. You wouldn't leave her. You'd be a good family man. She would, she would berate you and hate you nonstop and all your values. And then you'd have to like fight all the time about how you'd raise your kid and like what the kid believed in your, and her sister would be like, I have a dick now. And you're like, it's not a real dick. And it's like, that's a real dick. If, if Gary wants it to be, it's like, Gary is just not what? Dude, you don't need that shit. And your name's Tommy Lee. Dude, you probably have a hammer on you. Like the drummer from Motley Crue. Dude's got a fucking hammer on him. Tommy Lee, baby. Bro, you did, you, you dodged... Just trust me, like the goal is family. And I'm not saying don't date. I'm not saying you can't make mistakes or 
learn stuff from dating or wake up somewhere not know where the hell you are and you got some girl making you breakfast that you don't understand but just don't think that's your goal like that's not the end game that's not what you want out of life is just a never-ending just bullshit you want someone that you can put down roots with and really grow with and and that's not going to be someone that that fucking hates you all right i gotta figure out um super chat stuff so i can read those because i really appreciate it because it allows me to do the comedy i want to with people like dave smith and not be um well i have been blackballed several times but turns out it doesn't really affect a bear okay let's read some of these babies and thanks everybody for super chatting and and feeding the bear it's very very nice of you here's five dollars for your stylist amy that's hysterical and happy day after your birthday amber Big fan, can I be Angry Welder Bear? Yes. That's a great bear name. And we're migrating the, uh, why did the stream drop that hard at 12.06? That's crazy. It went from 931 to 200 in the matter of five minutes. Someone's got to let me know. Did that, uh, did the stream go down? Now it's growing back up again, but that's, that's insane. That's something technical. That's not, that's a, that's not a normal thing. Yeah, in six minutes, it went from 931 people to 200. Oh, the stream froze? Is it back, though? Uh, it got sluggish. Oh, was it with... Um, stream was out for a few minutes. Oh, that's all good. Did, did we miss any with Dave or no? But the Dave shit's still rocking, though, right? You dropped on Vimeo and YouTube. Now you got most of it. Oh, sweet. Uh, hang on. I sent Owen Streamlabs yesterday. Do you guys know if he'll see the message? Natalia. I'll, I'll look for it now. After Dave. All right, cool. Well, that's a bummer. Technical issues are a, a bitch. But are they both still rolling? Let me try Vimeo. Let me try this real quick. Because we were cooking with gas, baby. One second, guys. Yeah, I think this 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 failed, huh? Vimeo is down. Oh no, Vimeo's still live. Vimeo's live, I think. No. I don't fucking know. Who cares? Let's just keep rocking. Oh, Ben says it was right after Dave. Blackballed, funny story. Stream looks good right now from Kodiak Bear, both rolling here. Vimeo is up big bear from Roy Bear. Alright, sweet. So we lost. We lost some good men out there. That's all right. We kept 200 and then we built back up. And it'll always be here. You can just uh, subscribe, hit the like button, comment, you know. And anything you want to write me, just feel, feel free to comment on the YouTube because I do see them. I, I like to read the, the YouTube comments because I think I'm really lucky to have an overwhelming amount of good people commenting. I really don't have the, the basement dweller troll losers on my YouTube as much. I think part of that is because I don't think, think YouTube uh, suggests my videos very often for obvious reasons. So um, I think most people that are here are here because they want to be here. And so they usually comment really cool shit. So um, comment on the videos and I'll read it. I'm actually going to read the comments from yesterday. I asked who people thought were really annoying. Um, and I know I'm not the most organized guy, but just understand I do over two hours every day. So, and I want to, I, I like to focus the most on the content of the streams and, um, being able to interact with you guys. So just understand that that and all the other stuff I have going on, it's, it's, it's the best I can currently do. I'm still trying to get better ways of organizing, but that's what I got, you know? Over two hours every day, which I like. I can't wait to do these every day. I usually have a lot I want to talk about. <laughs> All right, big fan. All right, I read that. Hey, Owen, I'm an Argentine liberal atheist in UK, but I think the left's gone to shit. We need people like you. I know what communism does is I lived in China for years. Can I be verified as panda bear? Yeah, there's already a panda bear, but you can be panda bear. And you're an atheist liberal in the United Kingdom, so... It's fitting to be a bear that doesn't want to fuck to save itself. 
You know, you put, I, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna show you my, my joke about pandas. But thank you for saying that, by the way. It's pretty cool how many people s seem to be on board with the message these days because uh, when you're a little ahead of the curve, and I like that Dave Smith said that because that's how I felt about Malinu a lot too. Like a lot of the shit that I was really against him on over time, reading a lot of the like primary sources and stuff, I started realizing that he was right about a lot of shit. Um, and again, people are so terrified of embarrassment that they don't want to admit when they're wrong and grow. And that to me is even more embarrassing when people like refuse to grow, like grown men are like, I was never wrong. Like there was this Buzzfeed article today that said like Candace Owen just two years ago said Trump was the worst and had a small dick. And it was supposed to be like embarrassing. And I'm like, yeah, that's called human growth. Like, how is that bad? Like, yeah, she did think that, which is even more anti-left because she was one of them. And over time, it's not even like she was raised by this like militant right wing guy. And so her whole life, she was said that she had to think for herself, unlike the other blacks. <laughs> no, she was part of that fucking plantation mentality. And then was like, wait a minute. This is really stupid. All right, here's a joke about panda bears. This is for you, my Argentine liberal. Dude, fuck pandas. Fuck all of them. Dude, pandas won't fuck to save themselves. It's time for them to go. You set them up nice. You set them up nice. You're like, time for you guys to breathe. And they're like, where's Chai? Like, Are you guys hungry? They're like, only bamboo. It's like, no, but we have all this other food. They're like, bamboo. And they're like, no, it's not bamboo. They're like, only bamboo. So do you know how much tax money we're paying to keep you guys going just so you fuck and eat? And you're like, we don't feel like it. That's when I just come in, <laughs> just gut him, eat him, gut him. He's gone. I don't need a panda bear. They got dumb heads. And they're lazy as fuck. They sleep 20 hours a day, only eat bamboo, and won't fuck. Why do you want that? Why would you want that? No one wants that. Let him die. Dude, I like black bears. I live near a lot of black bears. They'll go through my garbage. Staying alive, baby, I respect it. I high five them sometimes. They're like, fuck yeah. I'm like, you go, baby, you get that honey. You know what I mean? The polar bears are just up there drinking Coca-Cola. Just... Welcome, panda bear, or panda bear. Just thought I'd elaborate on how I feel about panda bears. Yeah, let's go ahead and get you to stop saying you're a liberal then if you see that it always ends in uh, starvation and genocide. Why don't you go ahead and uh, fucking, you know, get with the good guys. To learn more about crypto, check out Dollar Vigilante on YouTube. I, I just, I, I can't get my brain around it. Dollar Vigilante. Because I can kind of see that happening. If, if our government keeps overspending and just... I don't think we're going to just collapse as a civilization, but I think the dollar may get all fucked up and we might just transition to another form of currency. Because here's the thing, China's going to collapse too. You know, like everybody thinks that we all have all this money to China and then one day they're going to call it in. China's got a lot of their own problems uh, coming up in the future. Like way worse than us. Like all our government problems times that by a thousand. Like, like China had authoritarian governments dictating how they bred and their economy and everything. And now they're like becoming more and more market and they're getting wealthier and all that. But like, imagine them dealing with their government coming up in the future. Oh, it's going to be a disaster. Kevin, I'm a male supremacist. Dudes rule, girls drool. Welcome to the good team, buddy. Girls do drool. Guys do rule. Imagine the first guy, like in the first clubhouse, that, that realized that those things rhymed. Where they're like, dudes rule and girls drool. Guys, did you hear what I just said? Everyone's like, rule and drool. It's the same with, uh, like if you had your one buddy, your one Mexican buddy, who's like, hey, hey, man, can I borrow your car again, man? And you're like, no way, Jose. No way, Jose. Someone write that down. 
What are the fucking odds that rhymes? And Jose is like, I got to give it to you, man. That is a really, really catchy phrase. It's like, no way, Jose. He's like, and it's smart, too. I would have sold your car, man. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Dangui. Matt, what can be verified as bipolar bear taken? Yeah, that's been taken. That was one of the original ones, and it's been tried to be taken by thousands of, of bears. So um, I have Genghis Bear, or Genghis Bear, depending on how you pronounce it, working on a bear list for my website. Uh, right now, Island Bear has it at unbearablefamily.com, but I don't think he's been updating lately. Um, ever since I got kicked off on Twitter, some of the some of the dream died out there. But the dream was rebuilt and strengthened on Vimeo, my website, obviously YouTube, iTunes, wherever you get your podcast. The dream stayed very alive. The bear phone, the dream is is alive so much that I feel like a like a bad dad, where I'm not getting to. I'm not getting all my all my people. Like I have a lot of great messages right now. Oh, Brandon just wrote. Oh, there's Coder Bear. Just emailed a list of bear names from the registry. It's in Excel. Awesome. Mark. Uh, Thoughts analysis on faggots. Sticks held together when needed can be stronger, but when physically strung together, bound by force of government, their fate is linked and the bundle succumbs as anyone to the inescapable forces of nature, human nature. Parasite spread, rot spreads. If one burns, they all burn. Well, that... That's fascinating. That's that's the ultimate demise of collectivization, which is where the word faggot comes from is fasci, which of course is the root of fascism and Italian for bundle of sticks. It's all the same. That's why I'm obsessed with words, guys. I'm obsessed with words. Because if you know the definition of words, the history of man is revealed. Um, Owen, oh, just... Put pre-order my book on your website, release date January 2019 or later. Don't forget to put a counter, goal, a thousand books. Got it. Oh, someone just got the new send it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I really want to figure out from someone, I just haven't had time, how I can pre-order the book sale thing so that when it does come out, it jacks me up on the lists, like the Amazon lists and shit like that. Because um, it's more about that than, than money. At this point, it's about um, it's about a big fuck you to the people that thought they were not allowing me to be on lists. So I think that's what happens with pre-order. I think that's why uh, iTunes and YouTube and stuff, or uh, why, yeah, Apple does it. Like you pre-order movies, so then when it comes out, it all it jacks it up. I did that with my special, too. It didn't get me on any lists because I just sell it from Vimeo. Thank God for Vimeo. I love Vimeo. Shout out to Vimeo. Even though I'm back on YouTube and Vimeo, I'm not abandoning Vimeo. They were with me in a dark time. And if YouTube chugs soy again and kicks me off, which is most likely, I'll, be, I'll still be at Vimeo. But uh, the super chat feature and the chat feature is just, it's better on YouTube. And I'm not going to limit my audience's experience out of spite. I literally thought about this for hours one day about what I should do. Uh, interesting stuff. All right. The Brainy Bunch is a great homeschool information book. It consolidates all you need to know. Nice. Thank you. I, I research this shit all day now. I'm obsessed with uh, educate, educating children. All about comedian Bump by Schumer. Oh, I forgot to ask Dave about that. The, the most recent Legion at Skanks is fascinating. It's this dude. Okay, I forgot his name. It's all good because I'm about to say some shit about him that isn't that nice. So it's better. I, he sounds like a nice kid. but So this guy is headlining... Caroline's on Broadway. It's his audience. It's his first time headlining. He's about to do his full set. And he just hears from the side of the stage, hey, it's Amy Schumer. Can I do 10? And so the dude lets Amy do her set and doesn't get to do his set. And then apologizes to Amy after. And like, it was, normally I, I, would, be, I would make fun of Amy for doing that because that's so like classless. But after seeing his reaction, I almost got to give her credit for it and be like, man, she, you got to give it up to Amy Schumer for being able to read how, how weak that man was where he would give up his headlining spot to just a random famous person. 
who isn't loved in comedy. Like someone on the Legion of Skanks made this point where if it was like Chappelle or, uh, you know, George Carlin, if he was alive, like someone like that, you still may like a good guy could still potentially give them the spot to like, be like, man, my audience will never forget that they got to see George Carlin, you know? But Amy Schumer, that's like, you're being bumped for one of the, like, Patricia Arquette. You know, just like a random famous person. It's not even like, like, no one fucking cares. Like, nobody's like, oh my God, I can't wait to see the person shoved down my throat by mainstream media. And so he lets her take his microphone and, uh, and then apologize to her. And I'm like, I almost got to give her respect for that. Like hats off to Amy Schumer for just seeing such a weak animal, just weak prey and just taking what she wanted. I mean, it's a dick move, but man, I'm glad that she, like, I'm glad that that lesson can be learned by young comedians that don't ever fucking do that. Like if, if Amy Schumer is like, Hey, can I do 10 minutes? Just be like, no, just be like, Hey guys, Amy Schumer wants to do 10 minutes on the count of three. Say, fuck you cunt. Fuck you cunt. Fuck you cunt. Fuck you. Like he would have been a rock star. It's like when Rogan called out, um, that Mexican guy, the fake Mexican guy, he's half Honduran, half German. What the fuck's his name? Uh, Carlos Mencia, it's not even his real name. His name's Ned. But that's what launched uh, Rogan into into legendary status. It wasn't, um, he wasn't a legend before that. Like he was known, he was wealthy, he was a star. But when he called out Carlos Mencia, that's when people were like, oh, that guy's a hero. And if that dude had fucking took a stand, man, just said, no, there's things more important than your goddamn credits and your money. People want to see that because we all know that's true where your fucking money isn't, isn't more important than my show. Like in, in DMS, this kid was like, at least my mom got to see someone super, who was actually funny. Ha ha. It's like you pathetic sack of shit. And I'm sure I'd probably like the kid on a level, but it's like, dude, your own mother watched her son that she attempted to raise to be a man just allow just a fat entitled socialist take the mic no uh what did Chrissy say no Amy but thank you for coming to my show would have been it should have been his comeback nah fuck you cunt fuck you cunt thank you thank you though for no actually that probably would have been nice be like no, Amy, it's my show, but but thanks for coming out. I'm sure you heard a lot about me. You could have done that, but just fire. Because if you just torch that. Because think about how insane it is. Hang on, Seth Rogen and Joe Rogan are actually of the Russian Jew surname Rogansky. Well, Joe Rogan is not Jewish. He's Italian and Irish, I believe. Well, the thing about this dude is now he's going to get a lot of press about it. Like, I had no idea who he was, and a lot of people didn't know who he was, and now he's got on a lot of shows, but it's bad press. Hate the C word, but perfect in that reference. Totally. Totally. You can hate words all you want. I don't like the word moist. Joe's not Italian? Yeah, he is. Joe's Italian. He says he's Italian. I don't know why he'd lie about that. He said that he's descended from uh, just uh, Sicilian gorillas. Because his dad, um, you and Rogan, because August, please. Lisa, just kidding. He's Italian as pasta. Yeah, Joe's so fucking Italian. He's like, he has like hairy knuckles. All right, so let me read some more of these. Keep fighting the good fight, brother. Thank you, Daniel. Alex, I would like to know your thoughts, if any, on William Lane Craig. No idea who that is, Alex, but I will screenshot that so I can research it for in the future. My belief in God comes from the, uh, I lost it. My belief in God comes from the awesome capacity to love people, especially imperfect ones. And I'm thankful for this light in my life. That's awesome. Yeah. Cause God needs people in a way too. I, I, I can't remember who it was. It might've been Augustine or some like old school Christian thinker. 
uh, was talking about the one thing God lacks is limits. So it's almost like God needs more mortals to exist in a weird way because when you're everything, you're nothing. And it's so crazy how like the ultimate power is the lack of power. You have to create free will in order to even exist. It's, I don't know, it's really intense. You guys don't want to hear that. Uh, all right, what do we got here? Hey, Owen, hope to see you in Michigan soon. Can I be verified as better dead than Red Bear? Well, oh, dude, someone took that yesterday, Jeff. Be, uh, kill a commie for your mommy bear. You can be that. Someone took uh, better dead than Red Bear yesterday. What about Kyle and OB Clips channel? What about Kyle and OB Clips channel? Oh, yeah, so subscribe to Kyle Cavanaugh and also Owen Benjamin Clips channel. Uh, Base Texas runs that. Great dude. And we're, we're doing an Unbearable News Network YouTube channel as well. Uh, and also follow Eric Nimmer, whose special just dropped, yo, at my website. And we couldn't do, like, fancy lighting or a uh, stage because we were planning on performing at a theater and we got run out of there by the local socialists. So we had to perform in a library. But I think that's part of it. I think that's part of what makes it special. It's like a really cool thing that we, we actually pulled it off and the Bears came and the Bears loved him because he crushed Hey, Owen, when you come to Montreal for some stand-up? I did the festival three times, and I live near Montreal. I'd come up any time, but, you know, as soon as you guys get rid of Justin Trudeau, because I don't, I don't respect... I, like, Justin Trudeau is such an embarrassment. It's almost hard to go into Canada these days, and I love a lot of Canadians. Like, uh... I mean, Justin Trudeau. Kyle, I swear to God, if it freezes during him checking through my lyrics, I'm going to be so pissed. No, we're going to... Kyle, you have my word. We're going to get through the lyrics. Because I've, I put it off too long and you're my boy. Quite frankly, booking. How can actually book you on our show for real? Visit studio in Westchester, New York, or call in to chat. We go live Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our fans are bears. Uh... Dolev, Bayonet Bob, Coddington, Base Texan, Nimmer, all these guys can get in touch with me easily because I would tell you, oh, just comment on this video how I can get in touch with you so I will always be able to remember that and, and find you somehow and we'll set up a day. I'll call in. Just a reminder that Unbearable's app being developed is acting as a registry too. Boom! The app is also acting as a registry. Oh, and also Unbearable store or shop. I keep forgetting. You can get a hoodie right now. Unbearable shop or store. Shop. Unbearable shop. Run by my, my boy Brandon, who also does Crowder's merch. Really good dude. Hey, well, my name is Dave, and I'm black. Black, libertarian, anarcho-capitalist Christian. Can I be verified as Black Bear? Yeah, but it's with two Cs. Sorry that I was confused. I, I was only reading it like that because uh, I didn't know why there was no K on it, and then I, it made a lot of sense. You're a black libertarian anarcho-capitalist Christian. That's awesome, man. Good for you. Can you be uh, verified? It's verified, by the way, as Black Bear. Welcome, Black Bear. I'm uh, I'm excited to watch you fight Panda Bear, and see what that fucking British atheist liberal can do against our fucking Black Bear over here. Big Bear, did you get my email about skipping my PayPal? Did I a typical girl thing and wanted to change my? Verification from Hurricane to Stormy. Is that okay? Welcome, Stormy Bear. Love it, Ann. Uh, yeah, sorry I missed that. I, I, just, I miss things from time to time. Matt, okay, second try. Barber Bear. Welcome, Barber Bear. Oh, I think I got to all of them. Okay. So, how's the stream? My The stream here says it's, it's shit. But, uh... If you ain't bothering the devil, he's not bothering you. That's a good line. Breaking news, Black Bear is verified. Dun, 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 dun. Breaking news. All right, sweet. So let's look at Kyle's thing just to make sure, because I can tell he cares a lot, which is which is pretty cool. So I don't want to fuck him over. I don't want to fuck over Kyle. He's Canadian. He's got to deal with Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau is uh, like Hansel from Zoolander, except a leader. Okay, let me... Kyle Kavanaugh. Kyle Kavanaugh... Always likes to remind everybody. And um, I don't know if Field of Bears is texting in. Video is down, YouTube and Vimeo. That's from Bob. Refresh your stream. Oh, sweet. I missed that one, Bob. Uh, Field of Bears wants to remind everyone that socialism always ends in starvation, genocide, and Kyle wants to remind everyone to make babies. 
Okay, this is lyrics. Oh, there's a lot of lyrics here, Kyle. We'll do a little bit of it. He's a songwriter, very talented. It's called The Rise. Won't somebody please just come and lend me a hand because I'm so tired. This world is trying to twist my soul and make my spirit bend, and I'm so tired. My neighbor seems to have all the wealth. Well, I can't put food upon my shelf, and I'm so tired. Oh, why should we have more? They tell us we're all created equal while we starve as they live like kings. I live my days dressed in rags while they're adorned in diamond rings. Sounds a little commie so far, Kyle. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Oh, I've got an angel on my shoulder, and she's whispering softly in my ear. Look all around you at the suffering that you're blind to do to the privilege that you have that you haven't earned. Oh, I see. I like this. Uh, the suffering that you're blind to do to the privilege. Give me a little of what you have and I'll spread it around so the lowest among us won't be lost upon the ground. Don't you try to rise above anyone. Remember Icarus and the burning sun and any success that you achieve will only be attained by thief and greed. Ah, I think right now what this song is about is about the, uh, the weaponized empathy of socialism. One, it's like, don't, don't rise too high. Don't work too hard. You know, spread that shit out or else, as the Soviets would say, the, the tallest nail gets hammered down. One day the world will be a utopia where we're all the same. Which, by the way, to me sounds like the worst possible nightmare. I love the differences in humans. It's like what makes me so excited. And anything that deviates will replace or retain. We'll rewrite the story of history. That's true. Don't trust your eyes or what they see. For the world view we present is the only truth. Man, this is intense. I like it as a poem. I've never heard the song, but don't try to think differently. Peace is found in ideology. Diversity of thought is a danger to us all. And those of you who dare to dream will crush that spirit if we need to and leave what's left of your body to the wolves. It's very Canadian of you, Kyle. Wolves. We don't have a lot of wolves in the States. We have a lot of coyotes. Oh, I have a devil on my shoulder. He's whispering softly in my ear. It's a wild, wild world out there. And I'm the only one who cares that there's predators everywhere. You turn. There's a shadow on the horizon. Sauron's eyes unblinded as he sets his gaze on all I hold dear. He whispers, give to me all that you treasure and you'll never again live without me. He promises salvation for my wretched temptations and delusions of grandeur. You know that you are oppressed and frail and without me you will surely fail for I alone can save your soul. Give me everything you earn and your enemies will burn. We'll take them and their families while they sleep. I'm your father and this is your motherland. Yeah, and that, that, that's from the government's point of view. I'm your father and this is your motherland. You must know, that, that's very Russian, by the way. They consider the Russian soil the mother and the government is the father. You must never question or disobey. Do you understand? Any opposition is an enemy of the people. We'll tear from their homes and we'll tear down their steeples. There's no God here. I promise you faith has died and the blood of your good Lord cannot be washed away in the tide. I am your savior now, your judge, your jury, and executioner, and your fate is mine to command. Wow, this is fucking intense. It reminds me of that bicycle song. I'll, I'll show you. Now and forever, the world will be a utopia where we're all the same and, every, and anything that deviates will destroy. We'll rewrite the story of history so that the world will never know. How it was we came to be monsters we became how it was that we became to be that we came to be the monsters we became. Don't try to think differently. Peace is found in ideology. Diversity of thought must be crushed at any cost. And those of you who dare to dream of freedom will crush that spirit you'll see until there's nothing left of your body. I am the wolf. All right, I'm gonna plug his uh his uh channel before we start really diving into this a little bit just i'm sure there's a lot of people out there right now that was like that was fucking awesome kyle cavanaugh on youtube all right so it's so it starts with won't somebody please just come and lend me a hand because i'm so tired i'm so tired this world is trying to twist my soul and make my spirit bend and i'm so tired i'm so tired my neighbor seems to have all the wealth while i can't put food upon my shelf i'm so tired oh why should we have more they tell us we're all created equal while we starve as they live like kings. I live my days dressed in rags while they're adorned in diamond rings. Okay, so 
I like, dude, I really like this, Kyle, and I wouldn't bullshit you. At first, I was thinking I was about to start ripping it apart because that first beginning sounds like you're bitching, but really what you're doing is setting up the main character and you're setting up the Achilles heel that we all feel um, that is how the devil gets in or the state or the evil or whatever you want to call it. We all on some level are tired and we all on some level feel like um, someone else is getting something that you don't and you deserve and why do some people have this and other people don't, right? That's a natural feeling that we all feel and that is the point in the road where literally good and evil split like this, Cain and Abel, you know, envy and admiration. You know, like do you, do you work to be your ideal or do you kill your ideal? That, that, that moment right there is the beginning of it. And, um, and then from there, the, 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 it's almost like that, that great book by C.S. Lewis called uh, The Screwtape Letters, where it's one demon and it's an uncle and a nephew writing back and forth about how they get the souls of man. And, and this would be one of the ways. It's, it's the, tired, the tiredness. That's one reason why the state loves single moms, because single moms have an impossible job. Men have a natural compassion for single moms. They have to work and raise children, which is literally impossible. And so that is an Achilles heel to let in the state because we have this compassion where it's like, yeah, we should all help single moms. But once we have to understand the state is fucking sociopathic. It's literally Satan. It has to be personal choice to help individual moms or, or a culture that encourages them to get married and not fucking do it in the first place. And if so, uh, you have an extended family uh, that's tight and it's not been broken up by fucking government policies. Anyway, so angel whispering in the ear, you know, about privilege that you haven't earned and, um, you know, Icarus and all this stuff. And then utopia. This is one thing that everyone should always watch for. People who promise secular utopia are always lying. Always. That's why Christianity has heaven after life in the sky. And it's not like the sky. It's not on a cloud. You know, that's how atheists will mock Christianity, where it's like, oh, you think you'll sit on a cloud with a fucking harp? No, the whole thing is it's not here. The acceptance of suffering is the only way you can live without eternal suffering all the time. So when someone promises a, a way to get to utopia here while you're alive, they're lying because everyone gets old, everyone dies, everyone loses loved ones, everyone has regrets, everyone has depression, everyone has anxiety, everyone has fear, everyone has pain. So that will never go away. And sometimes when you're stripped of purpose through wealth, you face that fact so clearly that you become suicidally depressed. And that's why um, some people don't understand the destruction that money can do because they are tired and they want more food on their shelf, which we all feel. And then when you're given all the money, a very interesting thing happens. It can cause just catastrophe because you still feel like that and you don't know why anymore. And that is what makes people crumble sometimes. I talked about that with Malinu last time I was on there about how money can just magnify things in you that you haven't already dealt with and, and ruins people. And it's really tough. It's, it's very similar to try to explain to someone how having sex with a lot of beautiful strangers is a horrifying existence. People that haven't experienced it, unless they're like really have their head on straight and they were raised right and they have their morality straight, it's impossible for them to not hate you for saying that. It's similar to women telling other women that they're shopaholics. You know, it's like, oh my God, I'm such a shopaholic. You know, that's the thing about having a husband that's a billionaire is that everything I see, I just buy. And other women, they can't not hate that, even though it's hell. Like, like being, like buying everything you want is, is, is an awful existence, but it's really tough to explain that to a woman who, um, you know, can't buy anything. So I'm not going to go too long on this, but I really am impressed by it. So when you make everyone the same, that's dehumanizing people. That's why it always ends in, in genocide is because the, the only way socialism works is if everyone's dead. All right, you guys get it. The eye of Siron. And just the, 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 the allure of, of socialism, I think he does a really good job explaining.
And I, I say socialism not because it's necessarily always leftist. I mean, it is, but it's only, but you have to, you have to see it from me and Dave Smith's way of looking at right wing, left wing. Like people that think that the Nazis are right wing, they, they have no idea what I'm talking about. The Nazis are left wing. That's a trick. The government schools, which is what he talks about here, will, will give you a history so fragmented and so random that you can't possibly see how we got here or how we can fix it. You know, it's almost like there's a, there's a door with a combination lock and someone just says four, nine, six, 12, 40, 49, 72, but we're not going to tell you the order, but those are the right words. That's kind of what a lot of school does is they'll give you tidbits of Gandhi where of great things. He said tidbits of King tidbits of Mandela tidbits of Lincoln that are real and great, but they leave out a lot that allow you to get to the place we're at. Like Lincoln had some real bad shit about him and the Civil War is not as one side about the North freeing the slaves as they want us to believe. Yes, they did free the slaves, but that wasn't the purpose of the war. Just like World War II is not about freeing the Jews. I realized that because I'm from the only place in all of America that took in Jews World War, during World War II. Oswego, New York took in 900 Jews during World War II and that's the only place in the whole fucking country. And that is what tipped me as a young person into thinking there might be something people aren't telling us. Because if you frame World War II, a just war, glad we fought it, glad we won, don't get me wrong, um, as uh, uh, we had to fight Hitler because of the Holocaust, you're missing a huge amount of the war. And that was not the motivating factor. Same with Gandhi. Gandhi was a, a vicious racist and a very violent man and a very twisted man who used non-aggression, which is good, only because he couldn't beat the British. Some people think that he delayed Indians independence by 20 years, that it was going to happen anyway. I don't know. Check bear phone real quick. And then let's, uh, let's start landing the plane here. I know I'm going a little long, but I felt like that was probably going to happen. Uh, Biggles. It is just YouTube being cocksuckers. Twitch worked fine. Interesting. Thank you, Biggles. Also, thank you for offering to help with my knee surgery. I would feel pretty bad taking money I didn't earn. Bro, that's... What? No, that's the whole point of community, bro. A lot of people feel that way. Let me tell you, that's more destructive to think that way than it is to not think that way. And I'll explain. There's been people that I've helped out in, in like rough spots that end up hating me for it because of that, where they start feeling almost like, um, like, like they owe me something at first. There's like gratitude. And then they're like, well, I promise I'll pay you back. And I'm like, no, don't fucking think that way. Just, just, we've all been where you're at. I don't believe in, in big government, big tax, welfare state shit. So I fundamentally have to give people money who it can help because that's part of society. And I have to live that way or else I can't criticize the welfare state. It's part of how I feel. And I'm sure a lot of you guys feel that way, which is why you support this show. You have to make your decisions to help people in order to criticize um, altruism at the end of a gun, which is what the government is, right? And so then sometimes people, I'll help them. And then down the line, they become the biggest crazy assholes to me because it develops this insecurity where they're like, they feel like they don't deserve it or that they're a charity case. And then they feel shame. And then out of shame is anger. And I'm like, dude, just, just know that I've taken help from people in the past, that everyone has been there, you know? And that if, and if you don't understand that it's going to have the opposite effect. And then, because I think that's one reason why the left is becoming this, this fanged prey animal, this horrifying hatred that you see, this, this cognitive dissonance is because they're all about taking money from the state and then they hate the state for it, you know, versus like this dude's a fucking subscriber to the point where he has the bare phone number. Like he gave me 20 bucks a month for, for no reason, just to help the show. Like, of course I would help you. 
I can't, I'm starting to be able to tell when people um, are taking advantage of me. So, which is so ironic because those dudes would never feel that way. It's so ironic how the world works, man. It's like the people that think that way, like they'd have a hard time taking her, the ones that are not taking advantage of you. They just need to get their fucking head straight and know that it's not charity. It's how communities function. It's the same with like evil people don't think they're evil. I get emails sometimes where people are like, you seem so good, Big Bear. Like, I feel like I'm bad. I feel like I'm a bad person. Like, what do I do? I'm like, you don't think I think that sometimes? Like, actually bad people don't ever think that they just do shit like self-reflection is not the quality of a good person or of a, of a bad person. Like, like if, if someone's like, man, I, I feel like, uh, you know, there's something wrong with me or blah, blah, blah. That, that, that's, that's your conscience. It's so interesting how like the real pieces of shit are the ones that never would even question, um, free shit or anything. It's, it's interesting. All right. I'll stay focused. I'm going to answer the rest of these. Um, talk about what my piano teacher said, a little music theory, and then I'm out again, Eric Nimmer special, huge pianist.com slash specials. It's the first special I ever produced. that isn't me. Um, I sent out a link or a code for Patreons and subscribers to get it free. It's only five bucks, but I thought that was a cool thing we could do for you guys. But, um, or just buy it, whatever you want. I just, it's, it's cool. It's fucking great. He kills. And it's what me and Smith were talking about. It's like, you can bitch all you want about how the comedy sucks, but just go make it. You know, we had a tight budget on that and we made it work. Hey Owen, I know that Thomas, the legend Sowell was a huge influence on you. I just wanted to share one of the men that was a huge, inf huge influence on me, Milton Friedman. Oh man, I wish I'd read this with Smith. Smith loves Milton Friedman. I don't know if you've seen much of his work. He was one of the originals going on to campus, campuses melting snowflakes. Yeah, dude, he's a legend. He's a champion of individual freedom and free market um, economies. Check out Milton Friedman's appearance on Donahue. Uh, I would like to be verified as I'm your Huckleberry genius. Welcome, I'm your Huckleberry. Coder Bear, I think round one got cut off, so here's try two. Hey, Big Bear, app's coming along. Oh, I, I read this. I read this. I love Coder Bear. It's from Dave. I like the idea that third dimension where we live is where all the work to create things is done. Then the fourth dimension, you can make things appear at will, i.e. heaven, where all good ideas are expressed. Or if you did shitty things in life, you get preoccupied with all the shitty things and it appears like hell, forcing you to relive your mistakes until you learn from them and begin to do work again to create rather than destroy. Um, I love that because that's, that's one thing that really convinced me about good and evil is that heaven and hell exists on earth. Fourth dimension, I believe is actually time. But I think what you're talking about is maybe fifth dimension where it's like you see the world through a frame that will only let you have shit, just preoccupy you and stress and garbage. And then heaven is you can see through it, but that doesn't mean no pain. It doesn't mean no stress. It just means you see the world a lot more clearly because you have fundamental beliefs and morals and you're not at the whim of just every, like every feeling you have could just send you off on this course of nonsense. Matthew. Oh, and I love your stuff. I can't ever really join the live chat, but I always listen. Catching up on all your past podcasts as well. Looking forward to the book and the app. I'm trying to figure out all your platforms that you've not eternally that you're not eternally banned from yet. And I'm not sure if this is an appropriate request in this forum, but may I be verified as border bear? Stay strong, brother, Matt, welcome border bear. And this is a very appropriate way to do that. And, um, yeah, Twitch, I'm unbearable comedy YouTube. I have this channel and then Owen Benjamin clips, which is run by base Texan. Who's a fucking legend. That's the beauty of going on the road. Like when I did the Houston improv, I got to hang with, uh, like motherfucking nature bear and base Texan and a ton of bears. And then you, you know, like uh, Bayonet Bob, I got to hang with in Boston. Um, Coddington and, and that whole crew came up to uh, Saranac Lake when I had my special. You know, like a lot of these dudes that you see me trust on these platforms, it's because I've spent time with them in, in real life. It shows or stuff like that. And that's one reason why uh, I'll have like a circle, like a, like a, a circle of people that, that I trust 
You know, don't give me. I've never met Coder Bear, but I trust him. I've never met Genghis Bear. I trust him. But the beauty of touring is being able to actually spend time with you guys, and uh, just know that I really, really enjoy that a lot. And there's a ton more that I haven't even got to. I was just thinking of who I talked about at this at this stream. All right, let's land this plane. Kyle, yo, Big Bear, where can I find literature on the horrible history of Gandhi? Watch Molyneux's The Truth About Gandhi. And the thing about Molyneux, which is, don't get me wrong, many times I've been like, what? He will list you primary resource places where you can get all of this fucking information. Same with John, John Taylor Gatto. It's like, and if you talk to actual Indians... They have a real weird relationship with Gandhi because a lot of this stuff is absolutely true public record. Like uh, Gandhi, his quotes about black people, you won't believe. Let me just look one up right now. Um, I don't have a G on my phone or on my computer, as we all know. You guys have given me some good advice about how to fix that, but I think we all know that on my order of things to fix. The, the co copy and paste of G is pretty hilarious. Gandhi racist quotes. All right. Uh, oh man, it's gonna be so just, you gotta do it in books. It's gonna be so full of propaganda. All right, it's important to remember that early Gandhi had little contact with Africans and didn't, that's not true. That's not true. He, uh, he fought in South Africa. What does it mean, little contact with Africans? It's fucking why. Uh, was Mahatma Gandhi a racist from the BBC? Dude, I need quotes, bitch. Of course he was a racist. All right, let me see. This is from the BBC. So, Gandhi wrote to the Natal Parliament saying that a general belief seems to prevail in the colony that the Indians are better, if at all, than savages or the natives of Africa. Uh, must withdraw kafirs about the mixing of kafirs with the, kafir means nigger and in like Indian. Oh, uh, four. He wrote to a health officer in Johannesburg. He had no contact with Africans. Whatever. Must withdraw kafirs from an unsanitary uh, slum called the Cooley location, where a large number of Africans lived alongside Indians. About the mixing of the kafirs with the. That, bear in mind what that word means. With the Indians, I must confess, I feel most strongly. He wouldn't use the same bathrooms as black people. The same year he wrote that unlike the African, the Indian had no war dances, nor does he drink kafir beer. That's nigger beer, literally. Um, Gandhi wrote that the problem, when du Durban was hit by the plague in 05, Gandhi wrote that the problem would persist as long as Indians and Africans were being herded together indiscriminately at the hospital. Bear in mind, he's not talking about people with or without plague, he's saying just blacks should not be put with Indians. All right. Um, also, some South Africans have always accused the man who led India to independence of working with British colonial government to promote racial segregation. An April man was arrested in connection with vandalizing a statue of Gandhi. Hashtag Gandhi must fall. This gained circulation on the media. Gandhi believed in the Aryan Brotherhood. This involved whites and Indians higher up than Africans on the civilized scale. To that extent, he was a racist. To the extent that he wrote Africans out of uh, history or was keen to join with whites in their subjugation, he was a racist. To the extent that he accepted white minority power but was keen to be a my, um, junior partner, he was a racist. Thank God he did not succeed in this as we would have been culpable in the horrors of apartheid. <laughs> he believed in white power of the Aryan race. Uh, that's th that's BBC.com, guys. That's just just bear that in mind. He he was he was vicious, vicious man. Same with uh, uh, a lot of these dudes. A lot of these dudes are fucking like. Crazy. All right, let me let me. All right, let's check out uh, Gandhi and his nieces. Wait to hear about. Wait to hear about this. This is public knowledge to anyone who even knows to look. Gandhi I don't know how to spell nieces. 
I before E except ever C. All right. This is called an odd kind of piety from independent.co.uk. This is the first hit. An odd kind of piety, that's one way to put it. With religious chastity under scrutiny, a new book throws light on Gandhi's practice of sleeping next to naked girls. Girls, by the way, his 12-year-old nieces. In fact, he was sex mad, writes biographer Jad Adams. It was no secret that Gandhi had an unusual sex life. That's one way to put it, says Owen, not this. He spoke constantly of sex and gave detailed, often provocative instructions to his followers as how they might best observe chastity. His views were not always popular. Abnormal and unnatural was how the first prime minister of independent India described... By the way, and this is a guy who just got power because of Gandhi, and he's still calling it unnatural. Okay, what do we got here? <laughs> Listen to this. But there was something more complex than a pious plea for chastity to play in Gandhi's beliefs. Yeah, no, that, that, that chastity belief was for other people. Preaching and even his unusual personal practices, which included, alongside his famed chastity, sleeping naked next to nubile naked women to test his restraint. In the course of researching my new book on Gandhi, going through a hundred volumes of his... Com- All right, just... It became apparent, which add up to a more bizarre sexual history. Bizarre? Bizarre? Uh, all right. See, see, this is a left-wing publication. They have to acknowledge this shit, but look at how they're not, they're framing this like it's fucking okay. Um, okay, Gandhi. I should have done this before, but uh, this is fascinating. I'm going to list, I'm going to let you guys know about more Gandhi shit. <sighs> Gandhi was challenging his absence in his own way. He set up ashrams in which he began his first experiments with sex. Boys and girls were to bathe and sleep together, chastely, but were punished for any sexual talk. So he'd, he'd, he'd put boys and girls in bathtubs naked, then put them together in beds, and then watch them, and if they talked about sex, he would beat them. Uh, Gandhi's advice was that husbands should not be alone with their wives, and that when they felt passion, they should take a cold bath. And that, by the way, he would sleep with their wives. All right. While she's bathing, I keep my eyes... Oh. The attractive sister of Gandhi's secretary, um, also his personal physician, attended to Gandhi since her girlhood. She used to sleep and bathe with Gandhi. When challenged, he explained he ensured decency. While she was bathing, I kept my eyes tightly shut. He's naked in a bathtub with a young girl. And his way around it is uh, keeping his eyes shut. I do not know whether she bathes naked or with her underwear on. I can tell from the sound that she uses soap. Such a fucking creep. They're not, I can't, all right, Ghani's letters, you know, sleeping with me might be called an accident, all of it. <sighs> Fuck, come on. Gandhi would have women in his bed engaging in his experiments, which seemed to have been from a reading of his letters and exercise in striptease or other non-contact sexual activity. Uh, much, ex- much explicit material has been destroyed, but tantalizing remarks in Gandhi's letters remain as such. Um, I'm just going to read this and then I'm done with this topic. Vina's sleeping, I believe this is his niece, with me might be called an accident. All that can be said is that she slept close to me. One might assume then that getting into the spirit of the Gandhian experiment meant something more than just sleeping close to him. Uh, Involuntary discharges, which is him ejaculating. Uh, He had an almost magical belief in the power of semen. Uh, this is disgusting. I mean, the guy's a fucking pedophile. All right, I'm done with that. That's getting me, like, angry. Oh, by the way, trusting your chastity by sleeping with prepubescent girls. You understand? That's like saying, questioning my chastity by me sleeping naked next to men. Okay, seeing as there's no desire whatsoever to be sexual with a man, I could sleep next to a man... Not that I ever have or would because I have plenty of beds. But let's say hypothetically I'm naked, a dude's naked. That's not a test. That's a that's a really inconvenient setup. I don't even like sharing rooms with dudes because of snoring situations. But like 
Let's say a dude is naked, I'm naked, we're in a bed together. That is not a test. That's very, un that's like just a, a shitty setup. And at no point are you thinking, it's like a dog. Like I, my dog sleeps, all three of our dogs, George isn't allowed in the bed, he's too big. All, all three of our dogs sleep with us every night, right? There's no test as to whether or not I will fuck the dogs because I don't have any desire to fuck the dogs. If you're sleeping with your nine-year-old niece as a, as a test, that means you wanna fuck your nine-year-old niece. That's Gandhi. All right. Jesus. All right, let me read some of these. Hey, Owen, when are you coming? Um, hey, Owen, my name is Dave. Oh, I read that one. Big Bear, did you get my email about, uh, I read that one. Okay, second, uh, hey, George. Hey, love. I'm almost done. Hey, Big Bear, how can I access the Bear phone? Uh, I mean, I'll potentially give you access to the Bear phone, but I'm, I, I can't really do any more Bear phone access because I want to be able to actually see the Bear phone. Let's see if anyone else uh, texted. Oh, Scott. I love Scott. When I was down and out and broke and busted in 2012, an acquaintance gave me a car, an $8,000 car. Needless to say, we've been great friends ever since. It took me a while for me to not get over the feeling of not being worthy of such kindness. Now I'm able to help others. Not a car yet, but uh, keep doing. See, that's the beauty. It's once I've had so many people be kind to me and give me things when I was down and out and help me. Not even necessarily money, just like help. And if you allow the kindness in, like if you realize that you are worth it and all human beings are worth the kindness of others, it literally makes you more kind. So if you don't allow that, if you feel like you're not worth it or like you have to struggle when someone offers you help, me and one of my buddies, who's now dead unfortunately, came up with this idea that one of the best ways that you can become close to someone is ask for help. You know, if you ask for help and someone helps you, you become closer because it's just like it, only a real psychopath would manipulate the kindness of others. And there's not that many psychopaths. It's just unfortunately a lot of them successfully ran for Congress. Can I be verified as Silly Goose? I love you. Welcome, Silly Goose. Trans rights activists set their gaze on Owen. Hilarious. I like the uh, double entendre. Uh, back in the chat. Amen, Owen. Thanks, Roy. Yeah, it's always like, dude, so many people, so many great people. Like some of the greatest people I know, untouchably powerful and rich people I know, got to there from the kindness of others. Actually, all of them. Life is a team sport, man. You know, that's the irony about a lot of uh, like total individualists like, like me and a lot of you guys is it's not about living alone. It's not about not um, of accomplishing everything alone. Okay, here's a perfect example. Unbearable News Network, right? I have like seven bears right now working hard on it. Not getting paid, not, not even expecting money. I got on a call yesterday uh, and they had already laid out graphics and all this shit. You don't think there's part of me that could have th thought I'm, I don't deserve this? I, I need to pay them? Um, you know, like, like I feel bad. No, because I, I, they know I'll give them, like I've given some of them cash at times when, when it's fucking making it rain, but, um, it's not making money and it's fun. And one of the reasons that a lot of these people are so fucking talented is because they're, they're not expecting anything. They just love it, you know? And, uh, and it's a really great forum and a great set up where a lot of creative people out there, like I'll get emails sometimes from people being like, Big Bear, I need to be creative. Big Bear, I need purpose. I need to try at something. I, I, I want to be a part of comedy. And uh, it doesn't take that much money for people to survive. And, and after that, it pretty much is just like, do something fun. Like the first several years of me doing stand up, at no point did I ever even think I was gonna make a dollar. I did it because it was the coolest thing I could imagine doing. And, um, and so, yeah, I don't know why I'm going on a rant about this, but I just want young people, especially young men to know that, um, 
If people help you, don't feel bad. Feel like, dude, that's like one of the big completed, like one of the big cycles of life is people that have accomplished things and life has been good to and they've been blessed want to then pass it on to the next generation. One of my main motivations for the stream is that I have skills that I want to teach. You know, I, I believe in the, in the, in, in like an education that's just free, like free educate, like education from people that you choose to learn from. Like yesterday's uh, stream about that I uploaded about uh, music theory. That that's just I want anyone that that can help to just run with it because I had a teacher that gave me that. Okay, so let's talk about that and then I gotta go. But I'm enjoying this tremendously. But I have to get on with my day. Okay, so I did this whole thing about about uh, Canon and D, right? This. And how the bass, the bass is the conservative values and the right is the free-spirited classical liberal that can improvise and, and play and experiment and invent, right? But it still has to follow the rules of D major or else it's garbage. And that's why postmodernism and nihilism and um, progressivism is fucking bullshit because when nothing matters like that black lives matter black lives matter like you can't build on something when you incinerate everything you know um uh malinu who, who admitted he was wrong about something because he was a, like a, an intense atheist for a while and he's no longer. And looking back, he, he, he said, and um, this is a great way to put it. He's like, if there's a church and there's a hurricane, he's like, I felt like I was a guy who was criticizing the way that shelter was built. He's like, no, get in the church. It's protection from the hurricane. And then after, you can slowly help build on the church. You know, maybe take down a golden fucking statue that you think is hypocritical, but don't burn down the fucking church in a hurricane. And um, that's why it's like. You know, you can you can alter things, but it has to be within a set of guidelines. And if you're going to change the guideline, it has to be very, very respectfully and with a lot of skill and care and not just burning things to the ground. So my piano teacher who uh, got a sex change when I was 11, right? This is one reason why the whole trans trick never worked on me because Lucinda became wary. And I do um, uh, a bit about this. Uh, if you're going to have a sex change, do it on Halloween because uh, Lucinda came as a dude on Halloween and then just stayed a dude. I would guess Larry's affiliation politically would most likely be some form of libertarianism. Um, hates groupthink, spiritual, I, prob I think a Christian. Um, Open-minded to the, to the point of almost shaman. <laughs> like, like knew how to communicate just ancient truth to me. Almost like how like the, the, the directors of The Matrix are now both like women. It's like there's a certain type of artist that is so fucking out there that you don't know what they're going to do next. And so that's why that was my exposure to trans people growing up. And then when you see um, the LGBT come out and how it's all about collectivizing everything and leftism and all this shit, I'm like, and then... Larry would be the first person to say not only are children not capable of trans shit, but you probably shouldn't even think about it till you're like 40. You know, it's like a lot of trans people, there's a very, very small amount of them in reality. A lot of them don't even think they're the other sex. It's like they're on a different fucking, I'm telling you, dude, it's like a different wavelength where it's just, all right. So anyway, I'm going to read some of the stuff that Larry was saying to me yesterday. And that's why Larry was getting so frustrated when I was getting annihilated by the trans mafias. Larry was like, what about Owen hates trans? And, um, and I was writing to Larry. I was like, dude, it's all a trick. Like, don't even try this shit. It's like, 
Because there's so few trans people that it's really hard to actually know one and know that it's all a trick. Like Jordan Peterson was like, I've never gotten an email from a trans person that's mad at me. You know, being actually trans, which is like 0.003% of the population or some shit, it's like tiny, uh, is not easy for them. And it's a very weird way to live. And typically they're not the type of people that want to tell anyone else how to live. And um, they're kind of bizarre people. So anyway, so this is what Larry said. I just want to write a little about, about that. The best trick is hearing these harmonics on a violin. All right. Try running your finger the entire length while uh, bowing it. I love the fact that the sequence goes mirror image. Okay, this is some high level shit. I won't go to that one yet. All right. What's the first one? I'm just going to go right to the Facebook post. Because this, this might really connect. This, this isn't going to connect with a ton of people, but this, this will connect with a few people about the, the math and the, uh, and just the crazy, I got, I, I got to wrap up the show soon. I'm starting to forget words. Like when you talk for two and a half hours straight, and then after doing an hour and a half with Crowder, and after talking gibberish with my son every breakfast, uh, you start forgetting words. Fractal. Some of you guys are really into like math and shit. And shit gets real fractal. All right, so here's some ancient knowledge from Larry. Did Facebook seriously fucking take down the post? It's hilarious if that's true. Facebook is fucking a gulag, dude. It's so crazy. But I know some of you psychos are going to get so into what Larry's got to say. All right. Here we go. Did I tell you about the harmonic series back then? Because I, in, I I posted this and, and gave a shout out to Larry saying I, I had a really open-minded teacher that allowed me to see the world and story. Um, if not, simply it is a series of pitches produced by dividing a length of string. Let's say it is a C string. The pitch at the halfway point is the C one octave above. George, come here. A third of the way produces the G. That's why the fifth is so important. Matter of fact, we get our order of sharp and flat keys by going up or down every five notes. C major has all the whites, but go up five to G, one sharp, then go up five to D, two sharps, five to A, three sharps, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and then gets more and more intense about it. So, um, all right, what do we got here? Like some of this stuff is so sick that I gotta just read this. All right, uh, I call it a timeline of history where, where is there? just keep going on the piano, hitting the order of notes. Where the fuck is this? In biblical terms, we look at the logos, the static written words on paper, as opposed to Rama, the personal revelation one receives while reading the logos, body and spirit of the word. See, Larry sees God in music. The harmonic series on the string goes in mirror image is like the infinity sign with the sacred node in the middle that marks the point of reverse. See, I don't understand that, but I'm almost understanding it. All right, I just want to read one thing about um, Canon. By the way, I wrote a book 25 years ago that made mention of our lessons, names changed since it is technically a novel, where I refer to Paco about Canon as well, perhaps one of the most spiritually profound songs ever written. So I wrote, hit me with more Canon knowledge. Uh, written around 1680, not well known until the 1970s. Orchestration was for three violins, one cello, eight bars of music repeated 28 times. Handel, Haydn, and Mozart liked the bass line so much that they used it for compositions also. Pachelbel wrote more than 500 works, and he taught the man who was Bach's teacher. Which So basically, Pachelbel was Socrates, who taught Plato, who taught Aristotle, who taught Alexander the Great. All right. So, um, the canon is the same structure played over and over again with different variations or generations built on top of a harmonic progression. The harmony is a person's spirit. The different melodies are the various incarnations of material or flesh. The piano was like a person too, but a dead person. 
The keys were dead, but the piano could still be played without them. Maybe that's why it is said that angels play harps. The piano had an outside and an inside, and the soul was the harp inside. Wow. This dream was referring to the aftermath of World War II. The broken piano was a metaphor describing the phoenix of creativity rising out of the devastation of war. You see what I'm saying? You see why one of the reasons I get I got so angry at the left's trans bullshit is because being trans is probably the least interesting thing about Larry. Larry is fucking crazy. But like the type of crazy where every now and then you'll like you'll see something said and be like, "Oh, you just answered like a profound riddle because you can see the world differently." All right. Final final check. George, come here, buddy. Come here. Final check to see if there's any more. Uh, I don't want to miss any because when I miss them, people sometimes get really bummed out. Um, hey, Owen. Love you, buddy. Bone Bear here. Sorry for the low amount. More to come when I get paid. And I'll check out Nimmer Special. Please take a quick look at this Jordan Peterson. Hey, George. Hey, buddy. Come here. Come here, George. George, come. We'll go out together in one second, buddy. Just come here. Stay here. Good boy. All this stuff about Nazi Germany has been confusing me. Thank you, thank you. All right, sweet. Thanks, buddy. Lynn, 45 Cali Bear says, more Gandhi Kafir quotes with pictures. Oh, well, you guys check that out. I got to go. I'm a half hour over schedule. AtlantaBlackStar.com slash not all peaceful. 13 racist quotes Gandhi said about black people. Plus, he slept with his naked nieces. Oh, he just said that. Yep. Um, what do we got here? Final win one. Oh, you said that. Final check on YouTube, and then we'll call it a day. Oh, someone just sent me a great fucking super chat. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Nick Down. Keep paying it forward, Bears. Looking forward to watching Nimmer later. later. You're going to love it, dude. It's unedited. It's exactly how it happened. I thought that was a really cool twist to it. My intro of him, and then his set is just exactly it. It was 39 minutes total, and then I did two hours after, but the audio was a little jacked up because I... You know, a lot of factors happening. Bears were spilling moonshine on shit. The guy running sound from the library was kind of just hitting buttons, but whatever. All right, last one. Can you do a stream where you interview Larry? Love you and your family, Owen. Absolutely. That would be a blast. You got to, you got to, I mean, music theory is so fucking sick. It's all math. It's all math. Margaret Thatcher is my favorite real life evil character. I actually kind of like Thatcher. She was, uh... She was uh, a conservative market person in a sea of fucking panda bears. Communism has killed more people than almost anything else. Capitalism has created 7 billion people in the world. Oh, totally. It's not even... Why are you guys fighting with some fucking socialist in here? Oh, the dude's a commie? Mark slept on a couch. He was a man who built... Don't even fight. Dude, arguing with, arguing with uh, socialists is even crazier than flat earth people. Because at least flat earth people... It's, it's definitely not true, but at least there's an intriguing argument. Like socialism is for sure wrong and evil and murderous. So if you want to just, you know, do a mental exercise by arguing with socialists, go for it. But it's, uh, it's not even close to possible. It's just like, it's so stupid. Friends with Eric Nimmer, Nimmer on Facebook now. It's fun seeing it in action at times, only on a macro scale. Oh, what are you guys talking about? Even on a micro scale, there's no, you, you can't even have a socialist family. I thought about that for a while. I debated a buddy about that for literally an hour. I thought you could have a socialist family and the families are made to be socialist. Even a, even a family isn't socialist. Even a family has to have consent and it can't be surrounded by um, a, a monopoly on fucking violence. The commie should super chat Owen. Oh no, commies never super chat or support ever, ever. They never buy anything. All they want is free shit from people. That's all they want. Your definitions make no sense. Dude, how about you're out? Watch this. You're out. You're blocked forever. B bye. Hide user from this channel. And that is not an issue of free speech. I've thought about this shit a lot. I'd rather have you guys have um, a situation where you don't have to hang with this piece of shit. Like there's literally no reason. Don't get me wrong. If someone's debating or having fun or someone could, could 
someone can have like a profoundly different opinion than all of us, but you, we do not need to let people saying Karl Marx was a genius hang out in a fucking chat. Like, go. Because the thing about these people is they think they're entitled to hang out with hundreds of people that have chosen to hang out together and talk and discuss ideas and music and form communities and start businesses and talk about love and family and child rearing. And then some asshole comes in and goes, you're all wrong because I'm right. And then they try to use your own ethics against you where they go, oh, you're going to silence me? I thought you were a free speech guy. No, no. You can have your parties. You don't get to come to my house. If I choose to let people in my house, welcome. If I don't choose to let people in my house, you don't get to come in my fucking house. That's like, it's such basic logic fallacies that I don't get why people don't see it. I think people are fucking under, undereducated. They go to these commie public schools. They don't have some crazy trans piano teacher like me and a fucking two college professor parents that are so, that are old enough and have fucking right-wing enough families that they weren't sold on the bullshit and my mom was a stay-at-home mom. I am so lucky to not be trickable by these fucking assholes when they go, oh, you're into free speech? Then let me talk. No, this is my chat. This is my fucking stream. You have nothing I want. I get the same shit from people sometimes too when they write to me like, you didn't respond to my super chat, so now I don't trust you, Big Bear. And I, fuck, go. I'm one of the only people with the amount of super chats I get that try to answer every single one. And I'm like deeply grateful. And if I don't get to yours, I'm sorry. But if you think for some reason that I owe you shit, get the fuck out, man. Or if someone's like, I used to like you, Big Bear, before you ever talked about politics, when you were just happy-go-lucky, I'm still pretty happy-go-lucky. I opened the goddamn show with a fucking kazoo. But you can ignore politics. Politics will not ignore you. And now that I'm married with children that I love and respect and want to have a good future, maybe I'm going to think about shit that isn't just my fucking self. And if someone doesn't see that and they don't want to fucking go to a comedy show where you actually have to think about shit sometimes, get the fuck out. I already have plenty. I have a family. I have health. I have enough cash to have food where I could write a $20,000 check and not plunge into Discover card debt. I've been that guy. I have plenty. If anyone wants to take th themselves away from the equation, fine. Man, I've had people be like, I'm one of the original bears and I've been supporting you since. Do you think I need your approval? The reason bears exist is because it's a way of life and a way of thinking that does not command loyalty or I'm not commanding you to be anything. It's like, I don't know you shit. You don't know me shit. I'm going to bring to you an interesting stream. I'm going to bring to you a community where people can speak their mind, love America, want protections, want, 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 that understand that for every freedom comes responsibility. They want families. They don't need to have families, but they fucking respect that the, the people come from dicks and vaginas and men and women are different. That's it. And like, there's nothing you can give me that will make me kneel to my own beliefs or uh, succumb to your bullshit. And because of that, this is fun. It's like there is no one, you know, God, my wife. Other than that, there's very few people that I will just fucking. Hey, relax. And even my wife, like I will, I will admit, you know, I will fucking back down in situations um, with her and then, but I, you know, don't get me wrong. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm not about to start talking about fucking, um, I'm not about to start talking about, uh, all this shit. My, my, my dog is, is literally, uh, scratching at the door. Cause he, I don't think he likes the, uh, the spirals. Oh, Hey love. Why don't I just come in and say bye to the people? Uh, We're going to have Amy say bye to the people. We're going to have Amy come in and say bye to the people. You have a good day too, Ben. Love you all and go spend time with your fam. I will. Big time. Great end. Here, look. It's bye. beautiful, Amy. I just want to come in like Alfred Hitchcock with my belly. Do, do it. Didn't. 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 No, no, no. We'll do it. We'll do it. 
What's Alfred Hitchcock? It's. I love you, baby. I'm coming. I'm just say bye to the peeps. All right, guys. Joe just said I love it when Owen spirals. Yeah, it's whenever I go. One of the reasons I like to keep it to two hours, like my famous five-hour spiral, is if I go over two hours, there's no way I'm not spiraling. There's just no way. Because, like, I verbally whittled down to, to, like, such a primal level that I'll just start spiraling. Where I'm like, how do you not respect pairs? Like, I, there's no way I don't spiral after two hours. Five hours and 40 minutes from Kyle to Barry. Yeah. Like, once, once I go past a certain point, there is no plugging Nimmer's special or telling people to subscribe and shit like that. It is literally just me being like, just drink water. That's why your skin is dry. It's not about moisturizing. Like, I, I can't not. All right. Much love, everybody. Hope to meet Owen one day to shake his hand for bringing up this community. Oh, well, the community was always here. I was just a, a good place to meet. Because I was... All right. I'm not going to keep spiraling. Have great days, everybody. Flasks. There's a new flask in town. Uh, it may be sold out. I don't know. We put it up this morning. It's a pretty sweet ass design. Um, hugepianist.com slash flask. Uh, get Nimmer special, hugepianist.com slash specials. You can get two of mine or his new one. Um, you can also get tickets to, I think Bellevue might have sold out. If Bellevue didn't sell out, it's just about to. Richland, um, Portland, I will be in Omaha. May 25th at the Unconvention with a bunch of libertarians. And uh, is there anything else I need to plug? Um, the podcast where, where you download your audio. Uh, you know, subscribe to that. Comment. Whatever the fuck people do. And make sure you check out Dave Smith. It was an honor having him on. He's a fucking great guy. He's uh, at Dave Smith Comic on Twitter. Let him know you enjoyed, you enjoyed him. Spread the love. Because Smith gets a lot of shit too. And uh, he's got a podcast, Part of the Problem. And that's that's about it, man. Subscribe, share it, fucking turn on the alerts. And uh, fucking no one owes anyone anything. Just, just make it about love. All right, peace.